Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to Leo History, and uh, welcome back to the long-awaited return of God of War Ragnarok, featuring my good friends at Overly Sarcastic Productions. Here in person is Blue, and Yee. over the power of the internet is Red. Hello, I'm the ghost in the machine. Ooh, <laughs> I'm one with the grid. The ghost in the Discord. <laughs> exactly. I'm so excited, y'all. I don't know about you, but I have been waiting. It's been over a month since we've been yeah. all together to uh, Holidays. play Holidays. Ick. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so, so, so excited to be back and for all of the more data boy goodness. Because, man, is Atreus going to make some decisions today? Oh, Atreus boy. is going to fuck up. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but that makes more con more good mythology content for us, because, you know, we've had an awful lot of game without the, the, a major group of gods. Sad, confused boy doesn't know what to do about godhood. Gone wrong. <laughs> Again? Okay. How many times is Atreus going to have this friggin' crisis? How long's the runtime of the game? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, so so I'm curious. How much of the game have uh, the three of us had spoiled? Without spoiling it for the audience, but, like, what like what, what have we done to, you know, so... so to start with, I've done a little fandom wiki trawling, you know, just to sort of see what's supposed to happen later. Um, so I have some inkling of the major plot beats, but no specific details. Yep, uh, I have played through about probably 80% of the game, uh, and have been spoiled on m the major plot beats for the rest of the game. I have played through probably about five or six hours past where we're about to be right now in mainline story. I've done some other stuff on the side, um, but I know like one or two major developments beyond that, um, but I've been trying. I, I, I turned off all of like the God of War suggestions because I kept getting like major things spoiled in the thumbnails of YouTube shorts. I'm like, man, <laughs> fuck you guys. Yeah. Um, so I know a couple things, but broadly, we're, we're going to treat this stream as we only know what has happened on stream so far. So no spoilers, that's, uh, is that is that a bannable or, or a mutable you, you policy? Get, you're gonna get timed out if okay. you're spoiling, uh, so please be chill about that. Uh, mods, we love you. Everyone, <laughs> say hi to the mods for be, putting in very good work. Uh, on helping keeping uh, spoiler free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to everyone who is tuning in, hello, we see you. Uh, I won't have time to thank each and every person because my setup is fully spread out across about <laughs> 10 feet of a living room. Uh, but we see you and you will all be thanked in credits at the end. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. What's this Andreas cosplay stream challenge Correct. that people keep donating to? We, we have some announcements to make. Uh, so <laughs> firstly, while you're watching, you will accumulate for free channel points, uh, which you can spend on a wide variety of fun stuff. There is currently a community challenge to make me dress up as Andreas Mahler, the protagonist of the game Pentiment, and the person that is the most targeted I have ever felt by a video game ever. I gotta know what this man looks like. He is a beautiful 16th century German man. Uh, and oh my. <laughs> we, uh, I am going to attempt to do the fancier cosplay, uh, but that means if you want to contribute channel points to that, uh, do make sure that gotcha. you give those over to the challenge, as we are now at 70% of the way there. It will be up for two more weeks, wow. so if we can finish it, I'll be doing a stream in cosplay as Act 2 Andreas Mahler. That's amazing. It's <laughs> amazing. I'm so excited. Additionally, though, as we are watching, uh, do consider hitting the follow button uh, to help be notified for all future streams. I do a wide variety of historical content, sometimes with friends over at OSP, Ooh. oftentimes with uh, other scholars visiting academics. Uh, so uh, in a couple weeks, I'll actually have a book historian on to talk about more Pentiment. Uh, and last week I had one of the developers of that game on. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to Very like cool. about it. 
And there is, if, if I'm not mistaken, later in the God of War stream series, we'll have some special guests on as well. Uh, di correct. Mm -hmm. uh, a great example, because this is the resuming of a series. Uh, the first half of, occurred in November and December, when the game first launched. And uh, basically, because I have a master's degree in your studies, I happen to also have... Uh, a lot of friends who do Norse studies, and so we are inviting those those folks on a bunch of early uh, career researchers with diverse perspectives on Norse mythology and its afterlife. So I have an absolutely incredible lineup uh, coming up in future weeks. Coming up next week, uh, we're going to have Basil Price, a PhD candidate at the University of York and the most prolific scholar I know. Uh, we're going to talk a bunch of weird late literature, so if you want to know about, I don't know, early modern Icelandic ballads about the Norse gods, <laughs> we got you covered. Uh, also a bunch of other, like, does Beowulf studies, does a lot mm -hmm. of uh, LGBT theory, queer histories uh, in Icelandic literature, so phenomenally cool person i am so excited very cool. uh coming up in a few weeks uh on the on february 11th we're going to have katie beard a phd candidate at the university of oxford who is a archaeologist specializing in norse religion uh and the creator of the largest database of thor's hammer pendants in the world so which is uh, a wild accomplishment to have it's like a that. wild <laughs> fully bonkers accomplishment but yeah <laughs> over doubled the number of Norse and Hammer pendants we're actually aware of as a collective. Wow. It's bonkers. And then coming up on February 18th, we're going to have Claire Mully, also from the University of Oxford, uh, who specializes in the afterlife of Norse mythology. So kind of taking a retrospective, looking at 19th century uh, literature, uh, sort of reconstructive movements, and the ways in which Norse mythology is still affecting us to this day while we're playing a video game about Norse mythology that came out a couple months ago. You know, it feels relevant. It's all together. We're in a hype train now, by the way, so thank you to, uh, to for this dude and other people who've been uh, subscribing and gifting subs. Uh, Very cool. Gazition with that tier two sub for the bonus emote. And that brings us to our last announcement before we get into the game. If you particularly like this, do consider uh, supporting the channel by hitting that subscribe button. If you have Amazon Prime, you do have Twitch Prime, and that means you get a free subscription every month, which gives you not one, not two, but 19 of the finest medieval marginalia emotes for you to spread chaos with on Twitch. So if you like that, if you like what we're doing, please consider uh, subscribing or heading over to Patreon in order to keep making this sort of thing possible. Where else will you find a medieval marginalia emote of a, an Ethiopian Orthodox Virgin Mary with a gun? Yeah, that one's, yeah. That one's not medieval, that's 19th century, but yeah, oh, okay. it, is, it is Ethiopian Virgin Mary with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> It's beautiful. We curate I, these for you. Exactly. Chad is Tag yourself. I'm definitely that boggle-eyed owl. Oh, <laughs> everyone is that boggle-eyed owl. Yeah. Uh, we do have a variant on the Discord where he's got cool sunglasses. That's great. <laughs> That's great. I, I, I do love that. It's real good. All right, so... Um, we will, as we're playing through this game, periodically be making some... Uh, possible predictions of future plot developments or doing some some lore speculating about the nature of certain things that we might be seeing in game um, this is not an invitation to post spoilers we may say things or take some guesses that might not be right that might be right but yeah. we'll try to couch anything of like oh this could be pointing towards this and this and such and thing um, that is, is speculation so we're gonna try to make it abundantly clear like you know we're, we're speaking from only the knowledge of what has transpired on the stream so far. Exactly. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make that, that yeah. clear so that uh, we're on the same page oh, there. Oh, good. And as Gazician Historian redeemed a marginalia moment where you can spam the entire wall with emotes, people oh, are tagging oh, oh. themselves with uh, Linda's Farm Bishop lurking, uh, this dude with the dance party, Magistrissa with the rabbits checking their notes, oh, and uh, providing the full, the full line. Uh, Magistrate, so you forgot? Oh, good, you did specify it. The duck that says not quack, but quack. 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 <laughs> quack. It is quack. It is an extent. <laughs> oh, it is. Magnificent. They are all joyful. We yeah. love them. All right. 
And with that, what do you say we uh, play some God of War? Shall we yeah. uh, turn off the, uh, the the hardcore EDM uh, remix that oh, we've got on. going it's on? It's so good, though. There's it EDM is, going? It's in the background. Oh. Yep. And that music does come to us from Overclocked Remix. Uh, so shout outs to all the remixers over there who uh, make my entire music taste possible. <laughs> Let's yeah. see what we've got. Hello. Right. We are currently in Vanaheim. Uh, what happened last we were here for anyone who did not catch the last stream? Uh, let's see. Uh, Atreus is in jail for doing crimes. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. And Specifically could... for sneaking out. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, going out without his dad's permission is a crime. <laughs> and so then, before we could properly punish Atreus, Freya showed up and tried to kill us. <coughs> Excuse me? We be Freya and then decided, you know, maybe instead of trying to kill each other, we'll work together for a little bit to break the curse that uh, put uh, Freya, that has trapped Freya in Midgard and made her very unhappy. So mm -hmm. we did. We came here to Vanaheim and we found her old home. And then we broke Norse mythology by killing the uh, dragon Nidhogger. Oh, yes, that's right. And, uh, yeah. That's it. Freya's decided she doesn't hate us. Easy as that. Yeah, that's all it, all it takes is uh, killing an immortal being in order to decide that she doesn't hate us. Power to be fair, that is a high bar. That, that is, is a still high a high bar. bar. Yeah. And we could stop now to do a bunch of side quests, but uh, we're not going to do that. Humble. They are pretty cool side quests, so when you play this for yourselves, do the side quests, but yeah. we're going we're gonna to mosey along. Actually, we are going to do the Alpine ones, because the Alpine ones have Norse mythology content. Uh, yes. So, specifically about Freyr and Gerdr. The, uh, oh. One of the side quests that we can do involves getting some, some new armor for Kratos, which is, as of yet, some of my favorite armor in the game. Um, also involves uh, going to the place in Vanaheim where Freya and Odin got married, which has very juicy backstory. Um, and is, if you're not playing to get through the story on a stream, it's very much worth your time to do those side quests. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly, fella. Maybe, mayhaps, I hate Odin more than you. <laughs> which, fair. Also, Freya is a playable character-ish. She's a official companion, so we can customize her stuff. Exactly. Which means she's got a whole bunch of just everything. Can upgrade her sword. Right. Can give her armor, accessories. Skills. Can change her armor, which feels weird. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Uh, Valkyrie form. Yes. <laughs> because Freya is also known as... Apart from being weirdly war-associated a lot of the time, it is also known as Vanadis, the Lady of the Vanir, and they interpret that to mean a Valkyrie, which is honestly, you know, a reasonable interpretation. Yeah. I am not offended by that interpretation. Vanadis, not Salomeo! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Put some fucking effort into it. <laughs> yeah, that was no setup. That was just straight to punchline. <laughs> I didn't even try to bait any of you. No. I just wanted to make it known. <laughs> Great. Oh, God. I, I saw a clip from a streamer I don't watch uh, where she was like, oh, man, can you guys believe that the only state that begins with K is Kentucky? It's the only one. And when the chat absolutely filled with people yelling Kansas, she got really close to the mic and says, Kansas dick fit in your mouth. And then everyone got, got real hard. So Wow. I, Red, you, you might have in. also seen Point Crow do the same thing once, and it was very oh, funny. Really? Yeah, Point okay. Crow's done that too. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, good. We're back to the magic chisel thing. Yes, we are. But it's less bad. It's at least less bad because you don't have to locate things. I will say, Chad is saying the game is very quiet. The game is um, quiet. We can fix that. Uh, and by the game is quiet... Okay, yep. Yeah, no, the game is just quiet. We can fix So, next time a big combat section starts, uh, y'all better tell me to, that the game is too I'll, loud. I'll remember to, to turn it down. 
because yeah, it is well, we can definitely going to be too loud again. This but that's okay. Us there if we can clear those vines. And Remember I believe what we do? do is we go sigil arrow, and then we go that. Nope. Then we go this. We have to chain them. Oh yeah. Well. How yeah. dare I have to engage with the game again? There's a fallen log nice. in the river. It has something on it I don't recognize. Uh, Bill. We're clear. Very fun way to tutorialize that Freya suddenly now has sonic arrows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you. Freya so magically gets sonic skillful. arrows, and Tears then Freya really magically right. gets sigil arrows, right. and uh, not exactly dark exactly ship she. He sleeps in a broom closet now. Right, he's adjusting. How did you Vanna find him? So pretty, though. Well, actually, that's gorgeous. down to Atreus having figured out how to access the oh, properties giant shares. Lumiere's like, yep, Tyr sleeps in a broom closet. It's like he has become man, furniture. I <laughs> did know that badly. Fan is pretty noisy. Is it still oh. Could you do a favor? Oh, uh, the dial up there if you could switch it to off like just yeah. on the left side dial. Odin have a private work with on the subject of Vanaheim, Odin was um, alone with your son. Adam, you sent me a paper did he tell that I read some of semi-recently. Yes. He about how maybe Vanaheim is not actually a place. Correct. Uh, is this is so. This is spicy. Uh, people can't agree on sources. And I mean, that's what we love, you know. Exactly. Uh, so the idea is first proposed by Rudolf Simek, who uh, this is a rare time I actually agree with him, but I think that's more of a virtue of he has published. Everything, every possible opinion on every possible topic <laughs> in Norse religion, because he's been doing this for him, thirty-five years. God, if not, no longer than that, actually. I have some forty-five years. Business up this river wow. I could yeah. No. Uh, or we this, can follow up on that elven He's been doing it forever. That's like some galaxy brain if strategies. You, you can't be wrong if you hold every opinion. Exactly. Uh, and <laughs> in twenty ten, he published uh, the Vanir in obituary which argues that the Vanir don't exist, uh, and right, there is nothing that actually distinguishes early practice between the Aesir and the Vanir. And in other words, the distinction that we see is completely made up uh, by none other than our boy Snorri. God damn it! Because uh, it all goes back, when in doubt, you just say, hey, uh, go, to the, go to the Pro Zeta, and it's the prose that the prose that makes stuff up because it's significantly later what? than our poetry. Now hold on, like that's certainly true. Let me just check my notes uh, because I feel Atreus like when I went looking for references you. for Vanaheim, they were not I all in the prose edda. Correct, right? That's the big that's the big counter argument to it, it that gets proposed almost immediately is one of our oldest poems says that Yerther is from Vanaheim. And yeah, was exactly. Frustrated. And so that's where, what that's where the article did. I sent you comes in. He never mm. to get his uh, this is by, it's by Frog, which is his lot. actual uh, academic comfort, name. He fine. goes huh. by Frog. He is lovely. I wonder if Incredible. So and uh, he are, he what he and his co-author did is they took a look Blue at the bright. poetry and oh. tried to identify, you well, know, is Vanna, is the word for Vanna and its related word Vannaheim, just a poetic contrivance? So, in other words, is this something that only exists to fit the alliterative meter of Norse poetry? Oh, God. Yeah, it, oh. I did get that part. It always shows up in relation to the word for wise, which is yes. viver. So I noticed that because, uh, so, so sorry, not to fully cut yeah. you off, ah! it, uh, but in the context of uh, describing Njord, uh, the, um, they talk about, like, oh, he's, you know, he's he's Vanir, and, you know, he's, like, one of the best gods, and he bore two children that are, like, the bestest best gods, but then every other reference to the Vanir is that they are wise. Yes. Like, they don't reference the realm of the Vanir, they don't say Vanaheim, they just say, oh, yes, in the Vanir, who were super wise, and then moved on. Correct. So yeah, the uh, argument is basically that now, this is a poetic legend. fossilization, right? That this is not a real term. Uh, it's mostly that this is something that is created uh, to fit poetic meters. Mm. And that's super cool. Uh, uh, upgrade for the blades. Upgrade Ooh. for the blades. Wow, uh, look at that. Yeah, I've got a lot of upgrades Always to do. Always a joy to work and on these. So the... The kind of corollary argument that comes out of this uh, is, well, maybe there's mention of Vanaheim in this super old poem, 
is actually a poetic word for the afterlife or something similar. I'll disinfect uh, my tool. So, because in context, it's actually pretty much all words for death. Uh, it, or a bunch that? of stanzas about death. Hmm. And so, like, around it is huh. afterlives. Mentions of various be. afterlives. And Gonna so, keep it suddenly is time, it like, right? hey, this is... Kratos? Th is this just a poetic statement for where do the gods go after they die? Uh, it fits. Uh, just a generic afterlife word that is not meant to refer to a real place? Huh. Hmm. Solidly, that maybe. Might be my best uh, piece yet today. The 2017 response to this is by this Tari Gunnell, right? who is, disclaimer, one of my mentors. Uh, <laughs> so I am a bit biased here. And it says, fun. no, uh, actually, when we look at a bunch of different evidence huh. here, uh, we actually that can see that this is quite definitively uh, that the Vanyar do have a different, like, a different set of attributes. And this is looking at like 500 years of evidence <laughs> from across Scandinavia. Compels and all says, no, we can see some, like, a different nexus between Rhea, Freyr and Odin that suggests that they are actually conceived as two, like, different classes of being. So this mm. is still contentious in that there have been four articles about this ever. Uh, but hey, that's actually pretty good for Norse consent. studies. <laughs> I wish I could say that was the worst of his husbandly habits. So yeah, that's the that it was the I've summary of the summary of, of the Vanyar might not exist. Yeah, I, Great. I, I can like kind of understand I knew the logic of, of like first. oh it's Surely it's a Odin didn't poetic to convention the because there's a lot of that Old. kind of stuff in we'll finish later. Greek and to a lesser extent Roman poetry where. You know, you have Swift Foot Much Achilles. He's called away, that because it fits the meter. What I don't want to do is apply a bunch of Greek mean. logic to I'm a, a Norse problem. Oh, oh, but, don't. like, I can understand, like, eh, it's not, not the craziest thing. We've seen it happen before. Sometimes it, people it just need to make their poetry like fit. It, it happens the all the time here. Uh, Luckily for us, Norse meters make Greek meters look easy. Yeah, that's fair. My. That is lucky. Because in Greek, one of the most complicated is like, like dactylic the hexameter, which is a lot more complicated than the pentameter, but it's still like storm to it's at least uh, regular. <laughs> it has some. Well, I mean, it's like, exactly. Shakespeare's like, but um, but I mean, th there's no meter you can really do in English that makes sense that's more complex than iambic pentameter, and even iambic really starts to stretch the the words in I some places and, and make and the order kind of go backwards children. to get the sentences the to sound pretty the way you need. I mean, so, Shakespeare made up his, his fair share of weird shit, that too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He had to. It, it worked. It worked great. It worked <laughs> That's why what I respect most is um, this line uh, will take more than a pair uh, of singing uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland, but I have uh, to believe in the where long run, you get the Jabberwock right poem, which is like all of the nouns in that are made up and most of the verbs. <laughs> exactly. Just make something that aesthetically sounds good. I wish we didn't have to slow walk through that. Uh, the forbidden ah! sands. My chariot pulled well, by Wolverines is looking not for a way underground. sufficiently good. Um, heck. People look out for a cave. I forgot there was another storm. Yeah, I completely forgot that there was another storm I had to take care of. Are we doing the storm? We've got it if we want to do the Freyr and Gerther bit. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And Let's I do want to do the Freyr and Gerther bit because it makes me angry. <laughs> okay. I see an entrance! Luckily, this, is, this one's shorter. Uh, it is shorter than the first one. So, for context, uh, previously when we were in Alfheim, one of the side quests was to free um, a being called uh, Hav 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 Havgava, um, which is basically a, uh, a, a, a Godzilla-sized jellyfish. Uh, oh yes, the <laughs> of the sands again is a rare According problem. to this game Even and not our source material. For yeah. a duet, once this hopgoofa is free. Do we think a viking ever saw a jellyfish? Ooh, probably. I mean, where are jellyfish native to? Oh, all over the damn place. There, I think there are some like arctic or subarctic jellyfish that just live real deep. It is not of the dark. Uh, but you know, they made it all the way. And in the ancient settlement. I'm increasingly persuaded They're by the argument the that well Norse uh, oh, travelers made it well. to the Canary Islands. I'd say we're so on the right track then. I, I would say, or not the Canaries, the Azores, uh, mm. the oh, other yeah. island set. 
I'm increasingly persuaded by the argument, so I think... Because uh, when, yeah. when Portugal got to the Azores in the 1400s, they, if I remember rightly, were uninhabited at the time. The, the Canaries had people on them, but the Azores were, were empty. Y yes, except now we, that we have genetic testing, we've tested the, they've tested the mice on the Azores, and they're more closely related to Scandinavian mice than they are to Spanish mice. That's amazing. So... Um, <laughs> so then clearly the implication is that, like, some, some Viking sailors showed up, tried to settle it, either left or died, and then, you know, 400 years later, Portuguese Could people are like, hey, because that's what Portuguese sounds like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, As and, we all know. And came out like, oh, there's no one here. Let's, let's party. Let's go. But the mice are like, oh, you takes a drag on a mouse cigarette. Oh, we've been here for centuries. You guys just show up, come into our mouse holes, try to take all our cheese. <laughs> now you need the, no the Sonic effect. Arrows. It's, it's Sonic Perhaps arrows a also? different arrow. Okay. Yeah. I was expecting we needed to... What? Work. Please. I need to break the This Rubik kind arrow. of hive material is How sensitive to sound. How odd. Yep. Thank you, Pop Up. I just need to get rid of this. Hold circle when you're Can doing just... the um the aim with the, with the bow, and then circle. Oh, yeah, sweet. Yep. I didn't even know. I fully did not know that that was an option. Great. Amazing. Yeah, I think he was getting caught on the the hex. It super was. Uh, but yeah, they. When I left, oh, came here Lion's Mane Jellyfish uh, so says fossilized rappy are both quite large and restricted to polar and subpolar waters, so it's not impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't and know as as of any, sound, like, it's that light column in the or any, of the like, temple that's the aberration. of fish, Just look at which how do exist, some of these uh, are. sort of, in Far older than the light well, context. Or even our trapped uh, I'm not, not aware of that. any that actually <laughs> mention jellyfish, <laughs> but that may well, be a case of I have not done enough animal studies scholarship rather than it doesn't exist. More hive. But denser. Uh, someone asks, uh, the Gazitian or Gazitian historian related question besides England, Vinland, and I guess the Azores, have there been well, any other major Viking settlements? This is a rough question because the answer is yes and everywhere, but uh, I think maybe we can refine the question to understanding that the Vikings went basically everywhere in northern and western Europe. Um, are there any places that were settled by Vikings, you know, like Greenland, Iceland kind of, of places. Yeah, uh, all over the east, what is what we now consider Eastern Europe, uh, is, while it's complicated to call the Kievan Rus just Scandinavian, there is a substantial Scandinavian presence uh, there, and it, like, the trade town of Lake Ladiga is the source of a significant portion of... You have to go yeah, in the thing. And, thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so Eastern Europe um, was the site of, you know, early proto-Russian-Ukrainian um, um, organized societies like the, uh, the Kievan Rus on a much larger scale than what had ever been seen uh, before. Um, as a result of the the trade routes, you yeah. know, up to Scandinavia and then yeah. down to the Black like, Sea and on towards Constantinople. Um, most so the start of like where where Russian history or Ukrainian history tends to trace its own start is to this you know quasi Scandinavian society the Kievan Rus. Yep. Uh, and, like, what I was saying there is like most Arabic Durhams in Europe come not from Spain. But from Lake Ladoga, which is in modern Russia, uh, barely. It's almost in Estonia. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the new one that's been getting a lot more scholarship, in part because since the fall of the Soviet Union, we can do a lot more research over there. Um, well, that just missed. That's right. Oh, I never do that. I always forget about that. Um, so that's been uh, a huge uh, boom in new scholarship in, in that region since the, the fall of the USSR in the 90s. Because it's easy to think like, yeah, you know, we kind of kind of know everything we're going to know and we're just basically nitpicking at this point. But there is, you know, 
brand new scholarship going on that is fundamentally transforming our understanding of, of very large civilizations. Um, that's been happening in the last, like, you know, 10, 20, 30 years that we don't usually think of. It's like, oh, you know, it's not like we discover a brand new ancient Rome. But uh, our knowledge of places like the Kievan Rus is, is exponentially increased um, since we've been able to actually start doing like real archaeology over there in the last 30 years. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, I know some folks who have done archaeology in that region, uh, been on digs. Uh, they have a lot of fun with it. Okay, uh, so we've had uh, 6,000 channel points towards the Andreas Cosplay Stream Challenge. We love that. Um, and someone said the Rurikids, right? Yeah, yes. the Rurikids is another term for the Kibbutz, yeah. specifically defining them as um, descendants uh, and the followers of, of King Rurik. Exactly. Who supposedly was it invited by Slavic people? Sure. <laughs> according, to the, according to a Slavic chronicle. So, you know, this is not North Saga made up. This is 12th century uh, chronicle. Light elves don't often travel underneath I mean, like, the barons, um, do that's they? so, like, Don't obviously is bullshit. Like, it almost sounds like, yes, we were invited into Ukraine to help organize. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's so made up. <laughs> uh, someone did ask what OSP well, thought of the new Tom Holland Mark Wahlberg Uncharted movie. Uh, mm. <laughs> which, oh if we indulge, would be the second time in two days we've talked about this movie. <laughs> yes, shockingly so. Second time in 12 hours, Red. <laughs> yes, yes, true. This was a last uh, night conversation with some of our other friends. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Uh, uh, what a, of all the films, like, that movie's so forgettable. It's astounding it comes up this often. exists, yeah. Sure does. That movie peaks in the opening scene, and it knows it. That's why it's the opening scene. Yeah. Because it's, it's just that bit from one that. of the games I, yeah, where, the other one. Like, yep. where Nathan Drake is like, uh, you know, falling out the back of a cargo plane, ta like tangled in the netting. Oh, God. Which I tragically the is the only memorable part of Uncharted 3. Because like Uncharted 3 is yep. not bad. It's just so forgettable. Yep. Uh... Yeah. I mean, I think the, I don't know. That movie feels huh, empty. You know, it's one of those movies that's setting up only the sequels. Like, very little happens in that movie that matters. Uh, and Look all the there. characters spend the entire movie that getting to where like we know they the have to be. So it, it's sort of like, um, it's kind of like Solo, a movie that possibly only I watched. Uh, and that the whole movie is just, you know, okay, we Han Solo needs to end up in roughly his starting position. Uh, he needs to be that character, he needs to have that ship, and that friend, and that general vibe. So the whole movie is like, oh, how's he gonna get from point A to point B? Um, and it only kind of worked. I'll go to bat for that movie. It's not terrible. Like, people just didn't want to see it because it's like, oh yeah, I'd love to just watch a movie about, you know, the character I think is more interesting after all of his character development. Um, yeah. I, so they tried to brother. do the same thing for Uncharted in that it was like, oh, it's a prequel. Look, it's it's babyface Tom yeah. Holland as grizzled Nathan Drake and, uh, yeah. and and Mark Wahlberg as Sully before he got the mustache. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, then the whole movie getting from point A to point B and then at the very end it's like, we are friends now. Can't wait for our next adventure. And yeah. it's like, yeah, fuck sure. Aside from the prequel problem, I'll, to try to, to bring it back to like comparing you know Uncharted 4 to... Or uh, uh, Uncharted movie to God of War. The difference between something like that, which is like, you know, vague historical vibes. Oh, you can do punching too. Uh, you know, vague historical vibes in the Uncharted movie. And something like this is where even like when God of War also gets things wrong, sometimes for uh, a justifiable reason, sometimes just because it's like, well, we decided to do bullshit. Um, with this game, there's a lot more to chew on when something's wrong, and the implications for the choices they make have a lot broader and more significant consequences than just, like, in something like the Uncharted movie, where it's just so empty and weightless feeling. Yeah. I, to, to, to attempt to bring it back. Um, it is not only pretty bad, it also isn't even anything to talk about. It's just yeah. nothing. It's empty. It's got a slightly decent parkour sequence in the middle. And then that's it. Behind you, watch out! And it has Mark Wahlberg in it, which is And a lot of, like, really weird 
product placement. I don't even remember what it was for, but it's like, oh, they built like a Jimmy John's on the entrance to the underground facility we need to get into. We better go to this Jimmy John's. <laughs> That's just the yep. whole, just goes on for, for a surprisingly long time. Um, someone comments asking about the thoughts on the supposed God of War adaptation by Amazon Studios not covering the Greek saga. I feel like it's missing an important part. I, I think the more crucial element here is that it's being developed again. by Amazon Studios, um, which is an immediate death sentence. Uh, yeah, they'll kill it for a tax break. Yeah, uh, well, that's uh, that's um, that's mostly Warner. Brothers, it's more, mostly you know, Warner Brothers. But the problem with Amazon Studios coming out of Lord of the Rings is a lot of people who worked on it were like, look. This studio is run by yes men who have no idea what they're doing, and we're just given a tremendous budget to try and buy the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. thinking that you can just throw money at a project and make it successful. Um, and even with the Amazon Lord of the Rings logo plastered on every single Amazon package that everyone got for two months, um, <laughs> you can't do that. So I don't, I don't have really any faith for the God of War adaptation because I don't, I don't trust that Amazon Studios can do it. And this is not just my opinion um this is basically me uh giving a a uh a, a less uh informed interpretation of what daniel green said when asked about this ah. very same question because he's like look ain't ain't good so uh you can watch his video on that for, for i more. also feel like in terms of just practicality god of war is similar to like last airbender in terms of how much work and how much digital replacement you have to do to make any of the visual effects work because yeah. like the whole point like god of war is in like the same evolutionary blade as like the choice devil may cry sense. and bayonetta and, and all the other spectacle the fighters where it's the like the point is that this is in insane breathe, that this is a ridiculous kind of combat that is wildly unrealistic like, where you can like juggle bad guys on the bullets you're shooting out of your gun or in the case of kratos you can like spin your way through this ridiculous th this room that's just jam-packed full of bad guys and just turn the whole thing into paste like that you'd basically have a face actor for only the dialogue scenes and then you'd have a really nice high-res 3d copy of that guy's body and then it may as well just be a video game cutscene. Um, yeah so Watch The Last of Us instead. <laughs> I've heard only good things about it, and I've seen some uh, some highlights that make me think that I shouldn't watch it. <laughs> I, Red, yeah. I will let you know how it is. Thank I'll watch you. it when it comes out, and I'll give you the cliff notes. The um, thing is, like, I, I've talked about this, but, like, the one thing I have, like, phobias about is, like, weird shit trying to grow in a person's body. It turns into trypophobia, it turns into a dislike of fungus, it turns into barely being able to listen to season one of the Magus Archives, but it's all coming from this one place, and that's like the one hang-up I have. Good. So I Almost know, there. I know that watching the show would be a stupid idea, <laughs> but I also know it's good! Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, even with yeah, I go Pedro Pascal involved, uh, I am surprised that it's good. Hmm. It could have well, easily been it's bad. It's only one episode in. It could have very easily been bad. Exactly. And it might end bad, who knows. Time but, um... Past yeah. quality is so, no guarantee of future quality. Yeah, we've seen a lot of shows start good and get bad. Um, you know what I've been watching? Murder, she wrote. Uh, Slaps. Yeah. True. Uh, is there anything... Ooh, got bad guys coming in. Um, oh, do we need to turn the game volume down? The fights. Probably. Yeah, we do that. Um, also, someone said, see New World. Yes. Um, New World? Uh, it was I, Amazon's game. Also, oh, yeah. see Amazon Luna in a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> it will go the way of Stadia, mark my words. Oh, I see. Um, is there anything mythologically salient that we can talk about while we're in the uh, the belly of the Haplica? Uh, Not really. Uh, okay. just, just me dying. Uh, you can use your, your rage mode. True, I do have that. I cannot see that because my camera is lit. Well, oh. oh, I have Valor form. Yeah. And then I proceeded to completely get caught. Uh, please stop spewing nonsense out of that. Uh, ow. Yeah, I, it would be cool to see a God of War story that does involve the Greek stuff, but it's, it's, that stuff's like 15 years old. It's just mm -hmm. not, it's not relevant. God of War is a Norse game now. They're, if it was to go back and do Greece, people would be like, 
But where's the beard and the axe and boy? What the <laughs> fuck? It's so ingrained into the identity of the game now. And and all for the better, because these games are a lot better than the early ones were. Also, um, yeah, when you, do you want to adapt 20 or 2007 Kratos for a 2023 Yeah, no, it, it does audience. not work. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the the really funny side effect, though, of God of War really kind of hitting it mainstream after God of War 4 is that there was a stretch of about a year where if you saw fan art of a bearded barbarian-looking guy with body stripes and an axe, it was a 50-50 shot if it was Kratos or Grog Strongjaw. Oh, yeah. And there was, like, <laughs> almost no way to distinguish if they weren't in color. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we do have something here, Adam. Go, yeah. Yeah. I just saw this ceremonial pipe used to get high. Uh, just, just, yay. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of, like, weird-ish, like, native coding of the Vanir mm. that we've seen <laughs> in yeah. some places. It's, it's pretty light compared to some of the other stuff. Uh, some, some weirder implications with the light and dark elves, mostly the dark elves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it 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 does seep in with the Vanir, doesn't it? <laughs> it it sure mm -hmm. is there, and they try and justify that by Freyr went somewhere west and uh, oh, found a dreamcatcher. Uh, and also, yeah, yeah. right, the, the and assumption. He's really into the culture. So the and just the assumption of hey, uh, you know, the Norse pre-Christian religion definitely did hallucinogenic drugs, right? Just a story. Evidence is actually thoroughly ambiguous. I appreciate the sentiment. But yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, there's some things that look like a definite maybe, like finding Henbane uh, I wouldn't in some grave contexts. But uh, finding Henbane, some Henbane seeds in so a couple of graves is not a lot of evidence. And, you know, the other half of it um, with uh you know fly agric uh do mushrooms you have to knock the thing around oh yeah do mushrooms make people to go be berserk fully is a fiction does yeah, is that not what sense. happened so there's there's just enough stuff here that's there you go yeah yep uh enough bad takes about uh, hallucinogens that I see. Oh, yes. Uh, smoke that good pipe weed. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, mm, in my Norse mythology game, are you sure? Let's get blasted on you. dank Scythian hash. <laughs> this is why the safest thing to do is to just take up fiction writing on the side. It destroys this impulse to just put it in, you know, the actual stuff that's supposed to be real. <laughs> Do what Tolkien did. Put all your, oh, that would be cool, into another world. Say that ceremonial pipe weed was made up by a race of tiny short people. <laughs> and then everyone else got into smoking because it was just so cool. Fair. Uh, and then he says that that uh, place is Earth, but 10,000 years in the past. Uh, yeah. I, the funny thing is, like, I keep forgetting that this is supposed this to be Earth until he brings up constellations, which are all the same. Oh. As, like... Yeah, there's like a little bit. I've been listening through the audiobook very, very slowly. Uh, I really forgot how leisurely these books are. <laughs> but uh, there's a bit where they're like, oh, the si uh, the sickle was low on the horizon, which is what the hobbits called uh, Ursa Major, basically. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's right. This is supposed to be Earth. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Hi, Uh, now we just need a break. We need to locate the hive spot and then break it. I think that's over here. I think that's over here. Some people are calling out um, where the story came from being in a previous game. Uh, they actually... We've seen in previous streams, Kratos brings up the story of him in Demos, so they actually make some deep cuts from the PSP games. Yeah. Um, one of the PSP games involves Kratos and his brother. The other one involves Kratos uh, murdering Persephone. Um, oh, but in that game, of course, Persephone sucks. Um, of course. So, yeah, it's all part of the same thing. Actually, here, let, let, me, let me shut up for a second, because this is actually a very <laughs> sweet scene. you thought was best for your son's safety. Even these creatures know. There is little uh, choice for a parent. You are not alone. 
Oh god. <laughs> and now neither are they. It's, they're so pretty. That's such a sweet conversation. I love what they've done with Kratos and Freya's relationship in this game. Didn't know I could get misty. Uh, it's it's really good because. Like, it is my favorite bit of how they are playing with uh, the mythology, doing something that is either very old or very late, uh, and in either case saying, oh yeah, you know, Odin and Freya are consort specifically to create a certain type of like relationship kind of uh, that parallels Kratos and Atreus and so we can actually explore these themes of like parenthood and loss mm -hmm. remotely effectively and that feels real good yeah kill that bird kill that bird <laughs> uh, actually I'm going to miss this bird 15 Fuck up that times bird. Chet, take your bets how many times am I going to miss this bird one. <laughs> Second try. Let's go. Statue of my brother. First try. <laughs> First try every time, except when it's the second try. Oh man, that's one of my favorite running gags watching Point Crow VODs, uh, or the edited ones that go on YouTube. First be try. Like, First try. And then people in the chat will be like, don't listen to him, YouTube! <laughs> 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 He's lying! <laughs> Yeah, that is good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, we have to do some nonsense. I don't think I need to, like, remove this thing. Somewhere, oh yeah, I have to remove this in order to break that to do stuff. Hi okay. <clears throat> So many stages of puzzling, but this is mandatory puzzling. Uh, to get to the little, the one conversation that this whole thing was for. I have complaints <sighs> about the pacing of this game. <laughs> this like, it's easy for me to say because I'm not the one playing it, so I'm just like exactly. watching it being like, do something. But, um, I don't know. I feel like there's a really solid story in this game that could have been told in like 10 hours generously. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the older thing, games were like 10, 15 hours tops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing, the thing that's in, super, super interesting to me about it, uh, for good and ill here, is that like this is a story where none of the main characters have any particularly strong impetus to keep the story moving forward. Oh God! So it is like one hundred. <laughs> 100% character interactions You're as, like, right. the only thing the story no, is actually for. Like, like I'm not gonna complain about a character-driven story, but giving your characters a motivation to engage with the story is like writing 101. <laughs> yeah, but, like, Atreus is the main one who really, like, moves things forward, because Atreus yeah. always is. Because uh, Kratos, by nature, is happiest when the plot does not progress. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the less stuff that Kratos has to deal with, the better. So his impetus is always to keep things exactly the way they are. <laughs> right, but that's why they usually kill the mentor. <laughs> and o Odin... So they stop dragging shit down. <laughs> right, and Odin doesn't want it to happen because things moving forward means Ragnarok happens, and yeah. that's bad. So Odin mm -hmm. doesn't want things to move forward. Freya wants things to move forward. Um... And Atreus wants things to move forward, but something. other than that, right, it creates this weird pacing thing where they are, after every story beat, they're like, hey, if you want to wander around, there's actually no rush. It's fine. It won't... No rush. It's not pressing or anything. It's only the end of the fucking world. Anyways, exactly. It's chill. It's chill. I don't know. This is like... This is a thing that a lot of games struggle with when they're trying to be more open world but also still have a plot. Because it's like, on the one hand, oh, there's a driving motivation. You absolutely must do this. But then it'll be like, but chill out. Slow your roll there, chief. It's like, you know, 
you start Breath of the Wild and they're like, time is of the essence, but also that nap really kicked your ass, Buster Brown. You gotta like train up a little bit before you try and storm the castle. Like I can see you wanna do it right now, but don't. You really gotta stretch first, boss. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, limber up, shake off all that rust. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But that's okay. That's why we're not gonna do too much of the side questing here on camera because yeah, that doesn't make for good watching experience. Even yeah. with the cutscene or the side quests that are well designed, uh, there's plenty that are just filler. But we want to do a little bit because I want to get the cutscene or the dialogue. We needed where... to uh, to shine the light on on Freyr's nips so that his sword exactly. will glow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And that'll do stuff. Uh, we can use that to unlock a spooky library over there. Uh, but we're just, we're just not going to do that because that means a boss fight. And uh, you see how well I'm playing. Oh, yeah, that boss fight's actually pretty tough. It's a rough boss fight, and I do not currently have the, a resurrection stuff. There is harder, but that, that boss fight's kind of tough. Yeah. His presence continues to guide them. It's, they realize it, or it is a very fun boss fight. Why am I able to hear the game audio? Uh, it's because it's coming out of your controller. Spooky. Yeah, they uh, they have like some sounds coming out of the controller to signify like, oh, this is like a little extra Foley effects. It's like oh, the, that's cute. Yeah, so like the chains specifically are coming out of the controller. All right. Because Kratos got it in its hand, so it feels tactile. Uh, I think they also okay. have a little thunk that comes out of the controller when you catch the axe. Yep. Ah. I've that's been game um. Design. I've been watching a couple of the Team Four Star Boys playing uh, one of those Dragon Ball games, and uh, the controller will occasionally like make noises when they're talking to somebody over a scouter, which I think is good game design. Yeah. And if he was late, oh boy, he'd be I, there's like. But if he succeeded. He was promised an audience. Hey, ignore your chest around this one. Uh, they're so gonna I force me to tell other Odin stories. Apparently, raging and half drunk before noon, telling me to get Fine. dressed and go This one's pro me. this story is coming out of the pros so, at uh, not knowing what had truly which been is the story of uh, the building of the walls of Asgard. It's the first story I ever translated in Old Norse. It's pretty cool. It's Ooh. literally it's the, one the first Old Norse I ever did was the story of the stonemason building the walls of Asgard. This is the uh, the giant that wants to be paid in the sun and the moon. Yeah, I'm uh, Oh, yes, and then Loki uh, does the thing with the goat, and uh, yeah, awesome. The, the, the thing with the horse for this one. Oh. The, goat, the goat is Skavi. Uh, oh, that's right. Yes, sorry. The thing with the horse is this one. Yes. Oh, fine. I sure. Uh, it, anytime I enter an area, it's not going to continue running the dialogue. I just have to sit there and wait until it tells me the story I actually want to hear. We, so we may just not worry about that. They we'll have a joke about that in the Stanley Parable, actually. It's pretty funny. Excuse me? There's, um, the there's thing a with game... the horse? No, 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 no. Uh, waiting for the dialogue to finish before oh! doing more gameplay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, the Stanley Parable has a joke about the time Loki fucked or gave birth to a horse. I don't really it's remember. It's possible. Well, I haven't seen every ending. <laughs> it's both. Both? <laughs> as long as well, it's different see, horses. Well, you giving birth is a common side effect of no. fucking. But are we, like, in terms of like, like, direct object, indirect object in this sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are they going gonna... to... Are they gonna do anything? Are they gonna tell me the useful one? Because I'll tolerate to horse fucking, but I yeah. draw the line at incest. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, no, okay, they're not gonna tell he wasn't me. So related we're just, to. We're just gonna summarize what they're saying. Um, they basically tell the poem Skirnismal uh, as part of Freyr's backstory. So uh, instead of listening to the prose Edda, we can go back to the poetic Edda. Hooray! Right. The more reliable Edda. Yeah, uh, though not the, le the, the less creepy one. one. The Snorri fanfic Edda. <laughs> no, no, that would be the, the, the prose Edda. The prose yeah. Edda is the older one, yeah. theoretically. Uh, but, so, the thing is, Freyr's wife is Gerdr, who is a Jotun woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the poem, what happens is that Freyr sneaks up to Odin's seat, what potentially implies that Freyr is considered to be Odin's son, according to this poem, but that's a whole kettle of worms. Oh, um, 
Don't worry about it. For some reason, he just like rolls up to Odin's seat, sits down, and looks across it and goes, Hey, there's a pretty lady like a half a world away. I'm now <laughs> well, sad mama, about it. Uh, that's one spicy lady. <laughs> and his mother... This is Elvis. Uh, oh, what the free fuck mama. is that? Johnny Bravo guy? Oh, Johnny yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, that actually sums up for her quite well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, his mom's got it. He goes, like, what's wrong? And Fred's like, I see a pretty lady and I'm sad about it. Uh, and Scully's like, hey, Skirnir, uh, whose name literally means the shine or shining one. It's cognate. Skir yeah. is shine. Um, but says, hey, you're going to go over to Jodenheim and you're going to persuade Gerther to marry Freyr. And Skirin is like, great, uh, I'm going to need Freyr's sword in payment. And Freyr's like, cool, <laughs> sounds like a great plan. But this gets him killed at Ragnarok. Uh, what doesn't get you killed at Ragnarok? <laughs> uh, this that's is like bad. those things that are like, oh, you know, eating red meat shortens your lifespan. Everything shortens your lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, linear this is progression your of time means Ragnarok. your lifespan Man, is shortened. <laughs> It also kind of feels like one of those Henry Stickman games where it's like, give give to your sword. Oh, you died, damn it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, a uh, um, uh, Freya's a... sword. Yeah. yeah. You use yeah. a teleporter, you use Freya's sword, you use a GameCube controller. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, the way Skirner actually persuades Gerther to do this is by threatening her, um, putting a full-on curse on her that... Uh, she will um, be forced to marry you. It's literally a three-headed thirst is the translation, and then repeatedly assaulted, uh, and will never know any joy or happiness again unless if she agrees to marry Freyr. That's how you know he cares. <laughs> In this game, they choose to frame this as, oh, Gerther has the secrets of realm travel, and Freyr, in an attempt, uh, shows up to Vanaheim. Freyr is her student and falls in love with her, and she's not interested. And so Freyr accidentally does super realm travel and ends up in Alfheim in an attempt to prove to Gerther that he is cool and spontaneous enough and should actually be a teacher-former-student relationship. Huh, that's It's not funny. better, but it still is apologia for what in the Old Norse is just full-on assault. Yeah, it's not better, but it's also not worse. Uh, actually, I'd probably say this is a little better. Like, it's this like... Especially if he's an adult and she's an adult, and it's like, yeah, it's a teacher-student thing, but if it's a former student and they're both grown-ups, I don't fucking know. It, it feels less bad than the one from the poem. Exactly. And the thing is, right, I think we shouldn't um, try and make the poem less bad. Like, we should just be like, wow, this is super fucked up. Mm -hmm. And let that be uncomfortable, because this is not a mythology that should be comfy. Uh, yeah. Because this is a fucked up society. So, yeah. Uh, I am not a fan of that, um, but that thought out of the way. Uh, Atreus. I think uh, they're not trying to do apologia for the culture, they're just trying to make Freyr a better dude. Exactly. Um, so, you're back. Are you ready to answer me? About what? What? So, this conversation is about Loki having whisked himself away to what we as players know is Ironwood. Kratos does not know that. Loki has been informed to not tell anyone about Ironwood. Uh, where does this thing come out of? He just... I love miscommunication, dramatic irony. The truth is you're being a complete asshole. Flaggy, you know that's no way to change a man's mind. He doesn't have any faith in me. It's fine if he keeps uh -huh. secrets. It's fine if mom did. That is not fine. Her secrets haunt every step of this path. Oh, okay. So you don't believe in her anymore either? This is not about your mother. What you have done is lie. Uh huh. I wonder where I learned that. That's quite enough. Since when do you always take his side? Since he became the one making sense. <laughs> Best line from well, Amir. Since exactly. he became the one making sense. You're only thinking about making a bad reason. decision. There is no good reason to go to Odin. He'll only cloud your mind. But I'd be going for us. I, I gotta stop something bad from happening. Something bad did happen. Look at me. At Freya. At Tia. Odin did this to us. What's got everyone caterwauling on? Brock's like, what are we <laughs> screaming about? To to Asgard. <laughs> Asgard? 
I like that Mimir is occasionally like, Bitch, I'm a severed head! <laughs> How much worse can I get? <laughs> exactly. They're going to continue to lie and keep things from me. Uh, I remember being Mars, 15 as son. well. That's, it's rough, know, Atreus, but don't worry, it doesn't last forever. That's get to choose. fair. Just leave me alone. Listen, While me. Listen, this is all... Uh, you know, that was not part of my experience of being 15. It's Sindri. This particular bit, not, not so much part of my experience. That That's rough. Look, I never turned into a bear, but some days I wished I could. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Loki just hit Sindri pretty hard in the head Come there. Come on! Come on. Uh, oh. 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 Only instance of Kratos calling Atreus boy in this game. Yep. And he's angry. Oh, boy. If only I was faster! Whoop, there he goes. <sighs> and now we're cold about it. <laughs> Two dads, one mom, three uncles. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I gotta say, I think that Kratos and Mimir's relationship is probably the healthiest thing in this game. <laughs> oh, easily. Yeah. They've got mutual understanding, you know, no expectations of each other. <laughs> Mimir's probably the only person Kratos actually listens to because Mimir has, like, I don't know, no uh, ulterior motives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, as an impartial observer, the fuck, bro? <laughs> True. What the fuck, lad? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? When did it get so bad out here? When did things get so bad out here, Atreus, since Fimble Winter? Yeah. Who bro, have you been listening? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, things are not looking so good for uh, Midgard. Uh -huh. Chat, I have first, terrible news for all of you. First time chat, darling Dr. Lambchap, get the poor kid a blanket, some cocoa, and let him have a good cry. <laughs> yup. Yeah, well, uh, instead of doing that, what if no one has healthy coping mechanisms? Uh, and we go to Asgard Kratos instead. Never meant a that sounds fun, right, Chet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what if no one had healthy coping mechanisms? Welcome to fiction. I'll be your guide. <laughs> Amir has a healthy coping mechanism. He is remarkably chill about being a severed head. Yeah. That's fair. Look, what if one person on has a healthy coping mechanism? Don't need to bathe nearly as much. <laughs> As we know, sin is stored in the balls, so Mimir is blameless. Ah, <laughs> oh, I see you've read your Augustine. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why, as we all know, women have never sinned. Wait, hold on. <laughs> what is this thing? Some kind of white? <laughs> but he is without balls, cough the first time. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this thing? It's a white. Which is oh. not, not how that works. Um, no, this feels want? like something they stole from Tolkien. Uh, they're kind of conflating wraith, wraiths and whites, which is a very common thing to do in uh, fiction. Yeah, I do appreciate how many different kinds of undead there are in Norse mythology and the, the later sagas. There are so many, and they're all so good. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Importantly, a white is not a type of undead. Uh, like, yeah, doesn't white just mean man? Yeah, it is D and D isms. Uh, yeah, literally. Which in turn is a Tolkienism. You know, they stole it from Barrow yeah. White. Yeah. Uh, exactly. They take it from Barrow White, but Tolkien uses it as a Barrow White as an archaic translation of Hagbuwi, Mound Dweller. So, he's taking an Old Norse thing, doing a very early 20th century translation of uh, that hoig, a burial mound, into a barrow, and a dweller is a person. So a barrow person is a barrow white. Flawless. Uh, D&D went like, per clearly this means that whites are undead. And here we are. Every fantasy ever since. Not to, like, derail this into a conversation of the recent D&D &D thing, but... Go for it. It is just so funny to me whenever D&D &D tries to be, like, 
we must protect the rights to our work. And it's like, whose work, D&D? Because I, have re I remember reading through, you know, the AD&D source book, where you literally called him a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Where you, get, you, you get couldn't sued. even finish filing the serial numbers off of Mr. Tolkien's estate. <laughs> I know. Uh, get get sued not only by the Tolkien estate, but by uh, the Lovecraft estate. For mm. D Advanced yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, Deities and Demigods, fully like has Lovecraft stuff without licensing it. Yep, of wow. course. Why would they? And that's the thing. It's like... D&D is fun because it is tropey. It's classic fantasy, fantasy schmaltz and all that jazz. But they stole all the best stuff from Tolkien because they knew good shit when they saw it. And then now they're trying to be like, hey, we have to protect our, our you know, our IP. And it's like, who's fucking IP? <laughs> the, the idea of the D20 is mm -hmm. clearly innovative and new and doesn't go back We've seen to D20s well, from ancient Rome. It's just a platonic yeah. solid. Well, yeah. well, it frustrates them so much. Uh, I watched the Legal Legal video about this, and I do yeah. recommend it. Uh, but, like, the thing is, you can't copyright or patent or trademark a rule set. You, you can't do it. Uh, at its base level, D&D &D is just a, a small number of rules about how you roll dice and then a fuck ton of storytelling around it. And that's all well and good, but the thing is, you can only really defend your right to own that story if it's actually your story. <laughs> yeah, but what, what they're actually doing in the in the new OGL is they're really honing in on the virtual tabletop, so they're right. focusing on the licensing of the technology that is crucial to a lot of third-party work. Right. So, like, I think that's a place where the legal legal video falls short is that mm. it's focusing on the. Uh, source reference document uh rather than Charlie. being uh focusing on all the other paraphernalia that Please. are also governed by Charlie. the open gaming license would the yeah, idea I... then be to basically make um uh god what's the uh, D, D beyond um into the only online platform and to boot roll 20 out of the the way entirely to, to make roll 20 pay out the ass for it yeah um, that makes sense yeah uh I have to stand to let me into that house and you can do importantly that? to make uh third-party publishers come on Charlie. pay quite a lot for their big productions yeah because uh, yeah. like forget like I other can't. people making rule books and stuff don't. being able to go to a competitor like roll 20 and just say like you can't Am do I? that anymore i'm going to copy your technology write some spaghetti code to get it to work basically duplicate your platform on our platform and then sue you out of existence yeah. is yeah that sounds like the strategy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and the wild thing is my mom uh lived oh through gosh. the original uh um editions of ad uh, of dungeons and dragons and know, wizards of the coast's original acquisition of it and the original ogl was a peace offering from wizards of the coast to basically signal to everybody that the previous owners of dungeons and dragons we're no longer going to be suing everybody who made homebrew content, which was a thing that they were doing. It was why D&D was withering on the vine in the 90s, is because they were threatening legal action to everybody who homebrewed anything, uh, which they didn't have the rights to do. But that's the thing. When it comes to legal stuff, oftentimes you win if you have more money to burn, not if you're actually right. And in this yeah. case, they had more money than any of the individual nerds at home that they were threatening legal action with because it's so expensive just to go to court. Uh, so basically, nobody wanted to deal with it. Nobody wanted to buy it. Nobody wanted to play it. Uh, so when Wizards bought it, they were like, ha ha, we're really sorry about that. Here is a uh, official legal agreement that you can sign that means it's totes okay to do this to prove that we're not going to pull that shit. That's the only reason the OGL existed, because a few people have pointed out that the OGL actually gives creators fewer rights than they just automatically have in terms of, you know, what you can and cannot copyright in a game. Like... You could do whatever the fuck you want, and Wizards of the Coast can't do shit about it. But if you sign Soft the OGL, lot. it's like, you uh -oh. you kind of, you know, it's a little bit limited. Uh, but the whole reason it was ever made is to be like, hey, we're really fucking sorry about that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, well, we had to reload a checkpoint. Um, oh, actually, we're going to quickly run to the restroom. No, we just got soft locked. Yeah. <laughs>
try to do what? a cutscene, but it didn't work. Yep. Ah, uh, I've heard about this. Yep. Say God. Camera, camera spookiness. Uh, <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, so. In the meantime, uh. Chat. If you played Elden Ring, you know for a fact that <laughs> this is a dog, and the dog lives. And I think we just we need a blessed dog for the dog, dog living. <sighs> she closed that window. That's why we're snooping around. Maria well, hasn't been checking on you. Exactly. Oops. And right. you know, while we're waiting for Blue to get this back, to uh, get this is a great time to Come repeat on. the announcements. Uh, yeah. Right. So, firstly, uh, thank you. Red, both you and Blue, for joining me for this. Uh, of course. It is delightful, as always, to have you here. Uh, but, yeah. you know, as everyone is uh, tuning in, we do have some announcements to make. Uh, firstly, if you are enjoying this, of course, make sure you hit that fo little follow button. Uh, and consider subscribing to the channel, because it helps a lot to keep having more guests. I don't just have OSP on. Uh, we have lots and lots of guests. Uh, coming up, and yeah. you know, it helps make those happen, keep getting us new interesting games. So, if you want to support the channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button. Speaking of guests, this is the return of a series, hence why we are starting halfway through the game. Uh, mm -hmm. We get we're having guests on in future weeks who specialize in various aspects of. Norse mythology and are like, you know, professional academics, either uh, largely working uh, on doctoral theses on various aspects of Norse mythology and its reception. So we have an incredible lineup. Uh, if you want to join the Discord, we do have a full schedule there. Uh, but coming up, you know, one week from today, three weeks from today, and four weeks today, we're going to have different guests coming on who I am unbelievably excited about having. Yes, good. Uh, next up, uh, the, as you are accumulating channel points, there, uh, which you do for free by watching, there are loads and loads of things you can donate them to, but there's currently a community challenge to make me do a cosplay stream as Andreas Mahler, the protagonist of Pentiment, uh, which was my favorite game of last year, the best history game I think I've ever played, and if you want to make me dress up as an extremely fancy 16th century German man, uh, this is how you make that happen. So, mm -hmm. do you consider donating those uh, channel points to the cause? We're currently at 75% of the 500,000 channel points that we need. So It wouldn't let me donate more than 2,000. I know, it is 2,000 per day per person. Bah. But it can be every day. <laughs> it is very fun. Uh, and to everyone who has been tuning in throughout this uh, and subscribing thus far, we appreciate you. There will be credits at the end where we'll thank everyone, but know that you are seen and deeply, deeply appreciated for each and every one of you. And with that, I think we can get back to the game and we'll have uh, another ghost coming by very, very shortly. Woo! Now, let's see if we softlock again. Yeah. Wow. We did not softlock this time. Beautiful. Oh, thank Chat, you. we're good. Never seen anything like this around here. Hey, look, it's one of those cool flowers from Vanaheim. From her home in Vanaheim? She must have Stretch goals, get someone to dress up as Caspar. Get a schlau or a staub. True. <laughs> Stretch goal, have a child steal my hat on stream. You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a pentiment reference? <laughs> it is a pentiment reference. We were having lunch with an Ethiopian monk and a child stole our hat in Aww. the middle of his lecture about how cool Ethiopian art is. It was very funny. She <laughs> kept the hat for 25 years, for the record. Oh. It was amazing. Adorable. But no, we are going to do the act two. I'm okay, going to cool. try for the act two. Yeah. Andreas Mahler cosplay, which is unbelievably fancy. Like, the man has drip. Uh, so, I'm excited. Back to check on her house. To check on you. Anyway. That's not an excuse. <clears throat> we are, now that the, we're going to make the dog actually be okay. Uh, and light up one teeny tiny fire using two pieces of paper. <laughs> That'll do it. And it'll make everything fine. Some Seder magic bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Also, I'm still not over the fact that the uh, turtle is named Charlie. Yeah. 
Like, come yeah, on, guys. I, go now. I can't stay. I just can't let my dad die, too. There's got to be something I can do. Well, there's something I can do. Crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that seems to be our option, because... The uh, oh, giant, giant spooky birds. Oh, it's in the window. Hey, dick. <laughs> hey, guess what? I'm a Stop totally normal dumb squawking raven. asshole. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's a weird ass looking bird. Yeah, that's here. That is thought. Be okay. <laughs> gone, <Thanks>. thought. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, apparently we Atreus makes the genius idea. Of leaving the window open immediately after saying it's cold and we should close the window. <laughs> he's very small and he has no money, so you can understand the kind of stress he's under. <laughs> Crime always works even when it doesn't, says Billy. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. What empire have I heard that from before? <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, they actually did close the window. I take it back. The birds, the bad, yeah. The bad decision is merely going to Asgard. Yeah, that part's dumb, but that's okay. Uh, 500 feet in the air. Splat. <laughs> also, did I mention that the birds are jerks? Yeah, these birds are assholes. <laughs> oh, boy. And then we come to Asgard and see it is basically Iceland. <laughs> Fully. Oh, beautiful. Like, good times. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's take a look out at um, the thing that we Hello? I'm here. Mm. I, I... Odin? Like, it even has the ridge. So hey, we are standing currently on the uh, North American Continental Plate, and oh. over there, that ridge is the European Continental oh, wow. Plate, and <laughs> these lakes Asgard. in between are uh, just in between two Continental Plates and are getting f bigger. God, I love plate tectonics. It's so yeah. fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't it like the, the Appalachians and the Scottish Highlands are the same or something? They like are that? the same mountain range, yeah. Yep, yep, that's what I like to hear. And I think, if I'm not, no, never mind. I was going to say something that was wrong and stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it also connects up to, I want to say the mountains in Norway yes. are the same range. Yes. Okay, that's the smart version of what I was first going to say and then I realized wait no that's definitely a fully different mountain range <laughs> good work team we figured it out but yeah it, it connects um... and they're old like yeah. they're older than very you don't find old. fossils in any of those or very old many fossils because they're before most things evolved yeah they're before bones <laughs> which is a wild sentence to say Older than bone is a damn cool concept, and I'm sad nobody's ever used it before. Anyway. Oh, there are, I cannot open chests while I am in combat, apparently. Wow. I don't understand it. I can multitask. I'm Everyone good at Everyone chill out for a second. I just gotta get some stuff. Gotta get some skis. The Matterhorn is half Europe and half Africa. I did not know that. Is that why it's so weirdly asymmetrical? I have no idea. Cause that's that's the one in Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. The I think the right I think it's Italy is technically on like a different continental plate than most of the rest of Eurasia. Mm. Mm. Yeah, cause cause the Alps have to come that, from somewhere. That also would explain the <laughs> Greek islands, I think. Hold on, let me get a plate tectonics map. Yeah. Let me, let me yeah. stop talking at my ass. Yeah. Um, uh, it was inevitable maps. that we'd get here eventually. Uh, exactly, right? You, between you and me, we were going to end up 
fully just talking geology eventually. Okay, eventually, hold on. yeah. Um. Hmm. And we could have let me around meanwhile, uh, and complain that the birds are jerks. Uh, mm -hmm. Luckily, you know, on the scale of birds are jerks, Icelandic birds are actually super chill. That makes I, sense. I will say, like the ravens, the ravens are not as jerks as like Rocky Mountain ravens. And the geese are not as jerks as Canada geese, so yeah. not as bad as it could have been. Okay, I'm reading an article. A uh, new study shows updated map of Earth's tectonic plates. Uh, this is from June of last year. It's in Forbes. Give me a sec. I'll read through it. Yeah, Sweet. I know. Got it. I see him. Uh, amazing. Uh, meanwhile, we break a rock and... Technically, right, we are not officially in Iceland, according to this, we are in Ivavetlia. Oh, which cool. is uh, an extremely important and extremely hard to uh, figure out place in Norse mythology. Oh, because so this is the this well, is the field. You know, this is this is the field. Okay, the yeah. place that might technically be its own realm, depending on how you define it. True. Hey! It is you go? complicated and mm -hmm. I'm very excited. <laughs> I am very excited to see uh, what we uh, figure out right. for that. I came to be your oh, God. apprentice. Uh, yes. But yeah. Doesn't mean I, like, serve you now. Right, this is Nine like the first place time. of the gods uh, in Norse mythology. Like, yep. this is where they start. And this is where they dick around playing games until those. Uh, Dwarf maidens walk out of no. The giant maidens walk out of Jotunheim and are like, "Hey, you should make the dwarves." Exactly, maybe, yeah. possibly, sort of. Possibly. Exactly, but chronology is difficult. Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, right. They do is just hang out and play not chess. Yeah. The game's similar to, but legally uh, distinct from <laughs> chess. Ow. Oh, great. Three whips. And boom. Bet it's safe from the other side of that wall. Uh, okay. So essentially, new tectonic plate models have added um, a lot of. Uh, the, the two main changes is that they've added a lot more microplates to their model, sure. and mm. they've represented certain features as zones rather than discrete points. One of the biggest changes is in Western North America around like the area that we think of as the San Andreas Fault Line. Yeah. Basically, there's a lot more fuckiness going on over there. You know, um, that makes sense. Um, uh, none percent surprise. Yeah, and then the other business is in the Eurasian Plate, um, which has a lot of extra microplates added to it. So the Eurasian plate covers Italy, Greece, Turkey, basically the whole North Med. Um, and that punches up into the Alps, the Pyrenees, the Carpathians, um, and explains essentially what's up with all those southern central european mountain ranges it's not part of the african plate but it is a series of Maybe microplates um between the like full proper eurasian plate and the full proper african plate that are pushing up against each other nice. which is also why well, turkey and greece are like 90 percent mountains each no uh, yeah. and italy has a literal spinal cord of an apennine mountain range <laughs> that's so, curiosity what does it have to say about the new madrid fault uh, you know, the weird one. Say about it. Um... Well, it's weird because it's not a fault line. It's like a break in a stable tectonic plate. It's the only reason you get earthquakes in the Midwest. How's there that spelled? Go. Like Madrid. New Madrid fault. I don't see anything in here about it. Weird. Uh, let me... Looking at this map, though... Um... No, I mean, the... The weirdness around the North American tectonic plate extends to about the Rockies, but doesn't include anything, you know, once we get to Midwest flatlands. The map that I see just says North American plate. 
Interesting. I can also okay, get some water so boiling because I think we might be out. Yeah. yeah Here's we'll the that. thing. The, the new Madrid Fault or the new Madrid Seismic oh, Zone uh, is it's in Missouri, uh, basically. Um, well, it's a fault system that is it's just like a crack in a solid plate in the in the solid north american plate um it's the only reason you ever get earthquakes in the midwest no the only reason apart from uh blasting bedrock with high explosives well okay is that an earthquake or is that just fucking around and finding out hang on both are you yeah from midgard yep also we're meeting a new character uh, Chad, if you're curious, his name means shield. Gives a safe place to settle, but it is in fact exactly the same word as shield, just with Old Norse sound changes applied to it. The Skilder guy's a skis bag, and I don't like him. <laughs> you're suspicious of everyone in this. I'm so suspicious. I mean, because like we're in Asgard. I don't trust a damn thing that happens in this realm. Everything that happened here. I mean, think about it. Like. Odin has been waiting for Loki to come to Asgard oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> so he has had time to think about his strategy. He could have had Loki get dropped right into, you know, the big Asgardian city inside the walls. But Loki was not dropped inside the walls. In fact, he was dropped over a river 50 feet in the air outside the walls to make it so that Loki would want to A, be glad to be standing on his guardian terra firma and then wants to move towards the walls and have a driving desire to climb over those walls and get inside as opposed to, oh, drop him in and then he's like, oh, well, now I want to leave by having him be outside and giving him something to go to and no way to get out it makes Loki want to be in Asgard and up where the Aesir are a lot more. That's at least wow. my interpretation yeah. of, of the fact that he got put out here beyond just, like, gameplay is yeah, Odin's that's... doing bullshit. And I don't believe the Skilder guy for two seconds. <laughs> that sounds like Odin is good at game design. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, going to point out, by the way, also, speaking of that river he dropped into, given that this is just Iceland... Shout out to the mountains over there that are time, the mountains about that distance away uh, yeah, from Thing that Uh One of those is a big volcano called Hecla. It erupted last in the 1970s and is probably overdue for another one. Yay! Yay! Um, that water is 4 degrees Celsius. Oh god. <laughs> I have been in that water. That water is yeah, can, crystal clear, incredibly beautiful, but you do need to be in a wetsuit. Um, because otherwise you do get hypothermia, and it is not a good time. Volcanoes were like the one thing that scared the shit out of me when I was little. It's like, fuck wild that they exist, yeah. and that we're just okay with that. Yeah. Sadly, I don't think I don't think the one in Iceland is really doing anything anymore. Oh, sadly. That's a sadly for you. Yes! I, I, the entire time I was there, there were no volcanoes erupting. I leave, one immediately goes off, and then by the time I get back to look at it, get back there, it has stopped doing things. Oh, that must have been heartbreaking, yep. narrowly escaping an exploding volcano. Oh, come on. It was far enough away that it was fine and gentle enough that people could do tourism to it. Humbug. <laughs> You know, they only had to monitor it for noxious gases, and actually, the wild imagery right when it started in February of 21? February 21. Uh, was that there was an Iron Age uh, burial site, or a Viking period burial site, identified in the That's path of the lava. Ooh! Six months <laughs> before the eruption. Oh boy, okay. that's oh, no. rough. And so they then they started having earthquakes, and so they paused all the excavations. Oh no. And then the uh, it started going off, oh. and they looked at what direction the lava was going with. Well, shit, no. shit, 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 shit. And uh, you, there's video footage of what effectively looked like a bunch of ants running in front of this lava thing, but they're the archaeologists doing salvage archaeology on oh, the site. Geez. God. They succeeded, and they closed it back up before the lava got to it, so wow. something might survive, question mark? So, like, Probably theoretically, not. they could dig it back up later? Yeah, so the, it could just there's basically a, buried again. Yes, except, um, also baked. 
Oh. Hmm. Th that's. Oh, could you stop? My unfired clay tablets. <laughs> 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 Again, throwback to um, uh, Mike and Nayan. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do a, a, a gathering the armies because there's some some people coming out up the coast. Not sure what that's about. We're gonna have to go check on it. And then there were no more <laughs> records ever written in this in this Mike and Nayan city. Rep God. Oh, oh God, which one was it? I forget the name of of which city it was, but it was it might have been Tyrans. It could have been Pelos. I, I frankly don't remember. Um, but it the was... only thing better than fictional eldritch horror is real eldritch horror. <laughs> yeah, true. My my all time favorite one is a um, late medieval, um, I want to say Florentine historian who was writing basically the main history of the plague that we had for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. several centuries yeah, uh and he it. talked about you Let's know like the jaffa and everything like that or uh kaffa sorry um and reasons why we now believe like okay maybe, maybe it didn't quite happen like that yeah. um but he was like yeah and the great calamity ended in and left the year blank because he wanted to be able to write when I the plague ended but he died oh God, so it says the great calamity ended like in that. and it ends you blank <laughs> That's you know, horrifying <laughs> given how well we've done since 1352 maybe that was the correct answer yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we may have peaked in the 13th century and it's all been downhill from there <laughs> uh, I, mean, I like that, indoor plumbing we got that That's book fair. on falconry from frederick the <laughs> second <See>? exactly <laughs> We got that in the 1200s, and we ne that was the peak of human uh, everything. What's it like, De Awibus or something? I don't know what the Latin name for it is. This feels like a uh, bold statement, considering yeah. Okay, yeah. everyone on this call makes their living on the internet. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> I mean, I've they said need to know several that. times online and in person that the like internet was a mistake. <laughs> ah. And I still hold that. <laughs> a profitable mistake. I mean, I'll take advantage yeah. of it since that's where we are, but, like, all things being equal, I'd rather not. <laughs> nah, we're thriving, baby. It's like, either I'd rather be in a world without the internet or in a world where we've had the internet for, like, 60 years, because, like, being here and trying to have to figure it out, oh, it's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> I like it. It's like the Wild West, but, I don't know, differently racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I assume you like it because you can't imagine a world without reboot, right? Uh, well, you know. <laughs> I don't want to expose my whole ass like that, but... <laughs> Amazingly, someone brought up reboot to me today that wasn't you. Yes! And I was like, it's what? spreading! <laughs> <laughs> what did they think of it? Uh, they thought it was fine. Yes! <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Blues being a uh, community manager. Yeah, Red is right. The okay. internet's the Wild West and such a huge mistake. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, Blues, I do not know how you'd manage to do this job. Uh, um, Red died. Rip. <laughs> we're good. I dropped my, uh, my stylus. No, you died. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> is she okay? She's fine, but she died. <laughs> oh. I should use the correct type of thing. Huh? Uh, what Might kind work. of tea should I make for this next Ooh. pot we got here? That's a good question. I don't know where your tea is. Uh, it is the open drawer oh, oh, down there. Cool. And, uh, pick, pick one? Back in a bit! Huh. Yeah! Tea! Yeah. There we go. Be suspicious. Don't be so pressure. Oh god, there's so many, there's so many weird ghosty things. Ah! I don't know why the weird ghosty things are just runes. Uh, actually, why are they all the same rune? Not, not that. But yeah, mm. besides character models, it's hard. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, Pokemon was doing unknowns since uh, the year 2000. So. I think this game could manage to do unknowns but with. Well, you know, we wouldn't want them to overexert themselves. There's like 60 hey, more hours of game to, to get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. God, the pacing on this. Well, you're saying that this is the most engaging gameplay possible of uh, climb a wall? I don't want to be mean, 
There's a lot to like about this game. There's just also a lot to complain about. <laughs> yep. Also, this is the... Uh, this is, I think, the case where Uncharted's influence on the game industry is, you know, the clearest. Because mm. this is just what traversal is. You're not a fan of a lot of rock climbing? I mean... I'm not saying it's the, um... I, I'm not saying that it's forced tension to make them uh, do climbing everywhere while saying vaguely witty one-liner sometimes, but I am saying it's forced tension. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, you know, if this were really Uncharted-based, you can bet that half of these ledges would be collapsing under you and dropping you onto five million guys with guns, but then part of the wall collapsed mid-quip, so... I'm telling you! <laughs> oh, boy. I may have timed that intentionally. Maybe they're just loading the entirety of Asgard behind this giant ass wall. <laughs> just like, don't oh, look don't yet. <laughs> don't don't look. <laughs> we haven't polished the pixels. Okay. Uh huh. Keep going. It's insufficiently shiny. Let's stop now. <laughs> Thor's left butt cheek isn't quite polished <laughs> enough. Uh huh. Oh hey, Come the on. other option, just jump scare. Mm. Engaging gameplay mechanics. <laughs> Hit button, get jump scared. Press X to regret. Okay. <laughs> exactly. I can do this. I can do oh, this. Oh boy. Almost There's there. so much climbing. But uh, chat, who's excited to meet a new character? That's our reward for it. We get... You know, I recently did some rock climbing for the first time in a while, and my arms still hurt about it, Hello. so That's I find this unrealistic. <laughs> Oh, I oh, need fuck. to. Uh, is this Heimdall? To, it is. Uh, I no. need to go park, but it won't let me park again with the app because oh, I no. exceeded the maximum time. So I'm gonna have to go and park manually. Uh, it is okay. That is a it's problem. Okay. We'll down the fort. It's fine. Cool. Okay, be right back. We'll, I think we'll manage. We'll, we'll be back. Maybe we'll kill Heimdall while you're gone. Exactly. How funny would it be if he just fucking dropped you and then oh. you had to climb this whole stupid <laughs> mountain again? <laughs> Uh, I know he's a dick because he's questions. eating an apple. Yep. Don't, don't worry. Uh, he's also a dick because he's going to throw the apple Drop. off the edge of the world. So he's a jerk and he wastes food. Exactly. Has, I, has Atreus considered turning into a bear and just, you know, solving this problem once and for all? I think... We should have talked to Freya before we threw a fit and left and just borrowed her hawk for it. You know, the thing that Loki does regularly. Heimdall was like, you know what? This game's not long enough already. You don't even know, do you? Yep. Man, he. You love to hate him. Do we? I think he's just a. Just kind of annoying. I think maybe I'll drop you. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm going to drop you. Goodbye. Wait, how mad the All Father's gonna be when when he yeah. finds out you killed his guest. Oh, we'll say it's extremely gone? satisfying when uh, uh, future spoilers. It's predictable. It's a God of War game. What do you think is gonna? Look, happen? obviously he's gonna get killed at some point. Exactly. I am not your enemy. It's very satisfying when you finally get the chance to. Hooray. I will be the judge of that. I appreciate that the Heimdachler is actually up here. Um, God, what an asshole. Because, yeah, but mythologically, uh, right, he is, is the watchman of the gods. He's uh, deaf, but can hear grass growing, and also has extremely keen eyesight. Wait, he's deaf? He's deaf. There's one source that just straight up says he's deaf. It's That's hysterical. That's wild. I don't know what to make of that because don't he can also just already. hear. Um, but yeah, uh, it says he's deaf. It's the Daredevil school of fictional disability. Exactly. You're disabled, but then you get a superpower that uh, fixes it. Basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Just ask your questions already. But How do you know I had questions? Uh, it is my job. The, the way they, 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 they do that here what is basically saying he I has future sight and just I love from is and you think functionally you just met me um, like omniscient you are eager to prove yourself. and mm -hmm. uses Wait that to be a jerk to us. To Great. Love to see it. We Super love to see fun it. and not annoying. Yes. I would also guess that you are uh -huh. disrespectful. Entitled and though he did get us there. You don't know me at all. I help people. Oh, disrespectful, entitled, and impulsive. impulsive. Yeah, mm. you know, I'll take that out. No. <laughs> no, you are here to help. This is Russian caravan tea. Perfect. To the smoke and yes. lie to whoever you Oof. have to to get what you want. Yes, I know you're young. Your voice probably dropped while you were climbing the wall, but also this is what Asgard. What a twisted little soul you have! <laughs> it's you are chaos in a spiffy archer. Suit. It sure looks like Asgard, or it sure but looks like um a generic Viking Emporia number three hundred and seventy-two. I've definitely been to this Ren fair before. Exactly. Uh, I think it was in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, in fact. <laughs> that said. Wait, so is this version of Heimdall also deaf? No, uh, okay. he's just an asshole. Sadly, okay. he said, like, watch your mouth move, and I was like, is he lip reading? That's kind of cool. That no, would be extremely cool, head. but I, nothing I think actually says uh, that he's deaf here. Mostly just he's um, a deaf pretty boy. Or not a deaf pretty boy, an asshole pretty boy. <laughs> oh, we love asshole pretty boys. Uh huh. I'll take 10, please. Wow. I saw an article about uh, crafting Heimdall to be, quote, the most punchable face uh, before I met him. And I'm like, oh, what's, I don't, I guess I know Heimdall's in the game, but I don't know, like, what the deal is. And then I met him, like, the next day. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. But valid. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this animal is supposed to be. Whoa. Are these all Aesir gods? Generic fantasy quadruped. You think all Aesir are... God? But told me that only... Oh, well, Skilder now, told Heimdall, Clearly, Heimdall, but I don't mean to contradict you, not but the, wor the word Aesir is the plural of the word Aus, and the plural of the word Aus is, uh, means God. <laughs> oh, you know who so else these are the gods' gods. <laughs> gods' gods. The MCU. <laughs> When they say I see your gods, they are in fact saying God's gods. Uh, and. We are not gods. Blah, 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 blah. The gods would be unscientific in this superhero movie franchise. <laughs> it is funny how, in a few places, characters who talk to Loki are like, oh, you heard stuff about us from someone else? Yeah, uh, I fundamentally doubt the authenticity of that source. <laughs> That's fair. It's like, oh, you heard the story about us from someone who hates us? Yeah, sure, they're trustworthy, which, like, on one hand, eh, but on the other hand, well, they hate you, so clearly they might be onto something. <laughs> Like, thus far, you do all suck pretty hard. True. <laughs> Smack down the ass on the floor. <laughs> Ow. Oh, and uh, by the way. I brought you a practice dummy. I thought we were going to Otis. Fight time. You see, the thing is, no. you do have treacherous intent. No. So I am not letting you anywhere near the all father. That's right. Show me all of your stupid little tricks. Ah. Good boy. Please don't. That is what he deserves. We gotta fight more of the Iron Harrier who are existing. He's so eminently punchable, and I know that he's designed that way, but also, come on. This is so annoying. He is so annoying. It is kind of funny that they just make the Iron Headyard like turbo jocks in this game. Well, it's that does very kind of funny. Fit. They're just like shirtless football hooligans. <laughs> I mean, with like, maces. Uh, that that gets <laughs> That does sound about right. Yeah. Uh, right. Well. What the hell is that? Oh, Blood. that's a that's a Roos Bardish. Uh, <laughs> oh, the weapon. Yeah, man. I was like, what the hell is that weapon? Uh, but no, it's just a shitty polearm 
or a shitty rendition of a pole arm from the Kevin Rose. Someone says, come on, I'm Harry, our skull some fucking goals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's, let's fight. Time. This was fast. We're moving hands off. We're fighting hands off already. It's, it's working great. It's, it's working great. He just God. slaps you. He doesn't even punch you. He just slaps you. I know. You know, it's going to be nice when Kratos rips this guy's head off. <laughs> it's... Can't confirm. Don't talk to me or my boy ever again. Ow. It is interesting that they gave Heimdall red eyes in this game. As if, like, he's seen too much shit that his eyes are permanently bloodshot. Or he's just high off his ass all the time. That's yeah. fair. He's like, I can see through the Matrix, man. Your puny attacks can't touch me. I, do have I, to I am sad that they didn't keep the gold teeth that he has. And the Prozetta, his description includes gold teeth. Oh, well, of course, the Prozetta, we have to trust it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when, when the other source for a Heimdallar is um, a stanza of a poem that we don't have the first two stanzas of, uh... And a poem called Rigsthula, in which like Pain Dutler, um, just, like, has three one-night stands with different couples and gives birth to all of the classes of humanity. Oh, Rigsthula. <laughs> We're not exactly drowning in sources here. He has gold teeth, it's just hard to see. Huh. Oh, uh, neat. Someone also, said that oh. I can't see purple, and that his eyes are actually purple. No, his eyes look red, but They're red. if we loo circle back around. Yeah. You let me sick man. Loki, you and Odin time. I am so this is a great scene. Yeah. I see you've met Heimdall. I see you've met Heimdall, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how dare you make me like you. This young man, who is my guest, is covered in mud. Care to explain? Also, he got he got the corduroy cloak drip. <laughs> yeah, I love or Odin's ridiculous kid? coat and hat. Uh, messing around. Of course, he means to betray me, huh? Heimdall. Because I think we discussed in the first stream that that embroidery pattern, like, is almost like like a priest robe style of bread. It's like there's it's some... goofy. It looks. It does look like. Oh god, what's the name of it? Like a ta no. cassock? No. Taberna no. Tabernacle? Uh, no, that's that's the, something else. The, the big the big cloak. It's the big cloak like one. Yeah. Uh, oh, Tabernacle's well. the box you put the yeah. the host into. It's, it's a word that means tent, but I can't remember what its name. Are you intending on killing me? I love this. See? Were you intent on killing me first thing? What no, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's not going to kill me right now. <laughs> it's like, of course he intends to betray me. We haven't given him a reason to trust us yet. Which, uh, like, again, this Odin, absolute dirtbag, scum of the earth asshole is really funny. That's the thing. This writing, it's so emotionally manipulative, but in a way that's really effective. Mm -hmm. They show you Heimdall, and Heimdall is an irredeemable asshole. He's incredibly smarmy. He sucks. And then they give you Odin to be the good cop, who's like, Hey, kid, I know you don't trust us. Of course you don't. Let me give you the grand tour. Treat you like the hero you are, you know. And because the whole game up to this point has just been Atreus and Kratos failing to communicate. Like, it really makes you feel like, wow, what a breath of fresh air. Finally, somebody who actually likes Atreus. Even though in the back of your mind, you're like, this is the least trustworthy motherfucker in the Nine Realms. Yeah, true. Because it's like, yeah, we've seen the things that Odin has done in Svartalheim to, like, completely abuse an entire race of people into just mining for him, what he's done yeah. occupying Vanaheim. And then Odin's like, I'm not that bad. And Atreus is like, you're not that bad. <laughs> and we've seen we've seen what he's done to Freya. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. we know how much he's fucked her up. We actually know, like, we, we know this monster, but we're not connecting him to this affable dude that we can see mm -hmm. in front of us and it's it's just you know it's a very effective bit of writing yeah and it gets better uh right the next place we go that's why i'm here isn't it apart from we get a little bit of an, him claiming the slain thing uh 
via you having to translate some old Norse. Uh, of course. Remember who they were in life. That's important, don't you think? A sense of identity. I do think it's funny that the, this interpretation is that when the Einherjar yeah. come out of Valhalla, they're quote a little foggy. Yeah. It's like they die in <laughs> battle. They're like, oh god, oh, where, where am I? What the fuck happened? Yeah. Uh -huh. And importantly, uh, right. It actually, it's not that they're a little foggy or remembering it. Uh, the Old Norse translates there to "Your name will be." Just fully, oh, yeah. fully wiping okay, whoever they were before, job. so they are now wow. just whatever he says they are. That's Which is brutal. very in line for what this Odin does. Yeah. Uh, Miku asks, "How accurately is Odin depicted?" Accuracy is a tough metric, but yeah. do we like the design? The second part of the question is maybe better to answer. Yeah, uh, I think this thanks. version of Odin is a little bit... <laughs> the thing is, personally, I Listen, really like the way Odin is characterized offer, in really the, sure you know, the poetic and prose right now, He's a scamp and a trickster, but I like that it's like, oh, this is the head there, god, but he's not, you know, he's respect, not like other head gods. He's a know. cool head god. Um, and, you know, just seeking knowledge, I think, is a very interesting trait for the leader of a pantheon to have. I like standard characterization of Odin. Embrace. This one's accurate to that in a lot of ways, oh, but he's such an asshole. Yeah. So, you know, this is how I feel about a lot of the gods' portrayals in uh, the God of War games. Is like, well, I normally like these guys, but now they're just made to be so slimy and awful so that we feel kind of okay when Kratos brutalizes them. Yeah. Uh, the the thing I super like in this writing, uh, we just no, saw, right, where he stops and talks to one of the Einherjar and goes like, ooh, that looks good, and then the next guy, he's like, I know your name, right, you're Erlander. Mm -hmm. Try and stay away from me, please. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, he knows the names of each, not only did he give them names, but he actually yeah. knows the names of each and every person. Father and of the slain. It helps when you have a bird to remember it for you. Yeah. <laughs> when, when... You didn't take this down. Exactly. A situation that needs your also, another new character. Sif. Sif. I missed welcoming our new house guest. Say hello to Loki. His diplomat. This is him. Oh boy, Here. I love her hair. Yeah. In our home. How nice. My diplomat. Everything all right in New Midgard? The refugees are fine. The situation is... The two's again, take a shot. Yep. You know who is back. I'll at least take a sip of tea, because... Put those books yeah. down. We got another stop to make I mean, Madge Trissa, it should read like a quick. Sif's hair does read like a wig, because mm -hmm. it should be a wig on the grounds that it is a wig. But should it be a wig at this yeah. point in time? All right. Again, I'm here. I assume so, because other stories that Loki are in, uh, actually it has to be, because Draepnir exists, and Mjolnir exists, and Gungnir exists, and yeah. so Sif's hair must have also already been created. So, yeah, Atreus. somehow. I don't know. I love it when the subtitles get really, like, specific. Yep. And not all that recently, I might add, did you just wake up with the urge to be a volatile death traps. Yeah. All right. Who's the kid? He's running football. Also, hello, um, you know, Durland, you Durland, vaguely yeah. Australian Durland. Yeah. By far, your most endearing characteristic. Actually, I think Durland Looking might have closer to New Zealand accent, if I remember rightly. Entire mm. economy speaking. That's fair. Uh, it's more of the letter I. Yeah. A lot of I vowels. That's more New Zealand. <laughs> that's fair. On time, on budget, on, time, on budget, and safely. safely. Mm. The dwarves have never let me down. And they're not about to start now, right? Uh, what are these supposed Good. to be exactly? Archimedes death rays? Weapons of... They have glass in them. Yeah, because... I'm voting Archimedes death ray. Yeah. Oh, I hope it's an Archimedes death ray. Because <laughs> it looks like it's mining um, from the Twilight Stone. It looked like that purple kind of stone, yeah, I had to guess. Yeah. When you're ready to get it's to a work, mystery. Start getting those answers, meet me in my study down the hall. I know, we tried. If you want to hear me talk more about Odin, I would recommend checking out the uh, channel oh, points and help yourself uh, options. options. Yes. I'm just saying. Redeem some of those. I'm just saying. You can pay to make me talk about whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's me, your entire economy speaking, uh, has a lot of layers. <laughs> there it is. Thank you, Peter. Okay, yep, yep. Peter, uh, oh god. 
Oh no, we've got so many redemptions. Uh, this is why I shouldn't remind people to do things. Because we have anyway. two design diagrams. Uh, a spicy take and an ice cold take. Let's do Ooh. the... Let's do the takes first. Uh, we need a searing hot take and the opposite of that. Oh, baby. Okay. Cold take being like an obvious thing or is like something that's just wrong? <laughs> Both. Either or. Pick okay. your options. Uh, mm. As I fail to navigate the most basic of menuing. Don't worry about it. Give <laughs> us all the diatribes. Yeah, yeah. Guess I, I on. My on anyway. cold take is that Asgard doesn't feel like quite enough oh, to me. Because one of the things that I think is very distinct about this setting is that there really are not a lot of people in this world. Yeah. And there yeah. kind of never were. Like, in the Greek games, there's the implication that there are large societies operating around where Kratos is. Like, all these Greek cities have, like, huge populations, and we, we get to That's see that quick. in some places. But there's never more than, like, 30 people in one place, and usually it's revenants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I feel like this Asgard is obviously impressive, but I am surprised that it's entirely made out of wood. Seems like a little too much of a... Of a Rohan um, rip yeah. for me. Yeah. Yep. That's my cold take. You know, that's that's a good good cold take. Uh, I I super agree with that. Uh, right, the idea that this version of Asgard has a lot to like, affinity with Edoras mm -hmm. I think is just correct. Because uh, it's like, that's the Great Hall? That's pretty this is pretty small. This is not yeah. large. I mean, that's this is pretty more, humble. The, and that would be my nitpick, because uh, there was a compliment on the nitpick redeemed as well. The nitpick uh, is that that is small. This is small even for the standards of a Viking period hall. Wow. Because, hmm. like, the one at, like, Borg is somewhere in the vicinity of, like, a hundred meters long. This feels yeah. smaller than that, and lower than that. Right? Very short, as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Magistrissa says Sparta being a dystopian totalitarian nightmare place for almost all of its inhabitants. Not quite. Uh, Sparta was a totalitarian nightmare place for the Helots, which was the population that Sparta enslaved to do the work so that the Spartan men could fight all the time. Um, which I mean, is like 90% of the people. It wasn't fun being a Spartan, but... Um, Loki, right? they did not have so much of the totalitarianism as the Helots did. That's maybe that's my nitpick, not to just put a comment right. on blast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, hey, we're meeting uh, the character who's uh, addition to the story. I really like. Exactly. Uh, the compliment is that Thruth rules. <laughs> I love Thruth. I, okay, is she from anywhere that yeah. isn't this game? Yeah. She is? Yeah. Thank God. Okay. Uh, She's too cool to be an OC. I'll be small. Uh, ah. right, the, oh wait! Yeah, yeah I remember it, that. And specifically, Alvi they're trying to get uh, trying to marry her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Thor is like, "Hey, none of that shit. Answer me my questions three, And then the sun rises, and he's like, "Haha, I've won!" And then the thing ends, and it's like, "Wait, clarify that statement." And then he doesn't. Yep. Um, additionally, additionally, uh, Thor's hall, Thruthvanger, mm. is named after Thruth. So. Thor's house is actually the place where Thruth lives. Incredible. Uh, yeah. Don't forget your sword. She's so fun. I love her stupid hair. <laughs> her, her hair is perfect. All right. Then we have, you know, the, the big chunky uh, channel point things for... Design uh, diatribes? Talk, talking about Odin. Hmm. I assume that's what you want them for. Uh, so, probably. Uh, I assume. It's so, one of a kind. The, My gave when we look at Odin, uh, we'll enter There's photo mode when we hit up here so that we can... I was just heading to the Great Hall, but if well, you need to go we may to want to talk around the... Just down those stairs. Talk here a bit more. We can, do, we can talk about some other folks here. Uh, we can do more design stuff on... Let's do some more design stuff on... Uh, Asgard, and presumably, if this is supposed to be Hleithsjalf, uh, which is Odin's then hall, mm. and then I we can do some stuff dad. on this and its design, and then we can do one on no. Odin, because there my were two redemptions, and me. therefore we need to do two different things. A whole bunch of what? Where? 
I think this discussion of uh, Thruth wanting to be a Valkyrie um, and her parents kind of not being on board with it and her yeah. being like, oh, you know, they just don't understand is interesting when contextualized with the fact that we know how much it sucked to be a Valkyrie in the previous game. <laughs> you know, when they were all insane and trapped in their physical bodies by Odin to fuck you up. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of makes sense for Sif and Thor to be like, I don't know. I, I don't think we want that to happen. <laughs> exactly. It's a case of them being, you know, um, for the first and thus far only time, decent parents. Mm. Well... I guess they didn't like Magni and Modi very much, but Thrud's the baby of the family, exactly. so, so they like her the best. And to be fair, Magni and Modi were real jackasses. So. They, they sucked. Uh, no one liked yeah. them. Yeah, they probably deserved it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, the, what, what the heck is going on with this wall? Uh, Peter says, no, I want you to discuss the belt buckles. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, Odin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First, though, the hall. Um, apart from the... Weird fucking nonsense that is this interlace. <laughs> it's... It's fine. Like, for the most part, this hall looks really good, except I have two, three and uh, major complaints. The first is this interlace is nonsense. Um, the second is that there is no high seat. Like... Right, this, right, right here. Come on. Stop it. You haven't had enough Heimdall in your day? I am talking to the wall behind you, Heimdall. Yeah. <laughs> right right up here. There should be a table set the other way. Uh, that is where the head of the household sits. And according to some texts like Erbegia Saga, uh, that you'd actually have a chair up here. And you'd sit in the chair, and there'd be pillars depicting the gods flanking the high seat. Ah... Uh. And these are incredibly important objects for, well, lots of stuff. Uh, but in the settlement of Iceland, they're specifically used as, like, wayfinding things. If you throw the high sea pillars overboard, and the gods and ancestral spirits want you to settle wherever it washes up. Hmm. That's, uh, that's the story of how they found Reykjavik in Iceland, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but in Erdvigasaga, it washes up in northwestern Iceland. Uh, okay. Uh, near Thorsness, and in Eilsaga, in they use uh, the corpse of Kveldulver, Eil's uh, grandfather, instead of a high sea pillar. Oh, charming. Well, gl glad Grandpa could be useful for he, something. He died on the voyage. What else were you going to do? Uh, yeah. Improvise, adapt, overcome. <laughs> exactly. Improvise, adapt, overcome, overboard your grandfather. Um. So yeah, we should have a high seat here. Uh, relatedly, there should probably be a hearth in the center here instead of just tables. Mm. Like, how are you supposed to overturn the meat benches when you only have, like, three benches and no hearth around them? Come on. Beowulf and Grendel need to have a fight in here. We Broke gotta do better. Broke from the game developers on this one. Exactly. This is what, this is the content you're here for, right, chat? Me, me ranting ram aimlessly about all the tiny details that don't matter that they got wrong? Speaking of which... Uh, the roof should be either thatch or should have shingles and uh, not. It looks like it just has these like 19th century American cottage vibes of <laughs> chunked wooden planks. Scandalous. Gazition informs us that yes, that is in fact why he, uh, they are here. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> uh, we could nitpick about the braziers, but the braziers look cool, so I'm not gonna like whatever. The textiles yeah. look cool, the braziers look cool. Uh, none of that shit survives in any useful form in our archaeological record, so there's not a ton of point in being like, oh, this is probably not right. Hmm. Unlike hearths, which do survive in our record and do exist. Uh, yeah. Lastly, they could have done something real fun here to like quietly emphasize how cool this place is and how stinking rich this place is. Uh, in pre uh viking age and early viking age sites uh mostly in denmark there are these things called uh gugube, uh which are little tiny gold foils that are found in the stumps uh in the foundation of a building where the pillars were sunk Ooh. they're probably placed there before the pillars were set but there has been some arguments 
that suggests that they like these. Wait, do they actually have them? Is that what this is? There's something on this wall. Uh, I have. And then square. Is which button is Pokemon? It's on? it's pause menu and then square. Pause menu and then square. Pause menu and then square. Yep. Come on, stay in focus. Stay. In. Take a selfie. Take a selfie. Stay in focus. Uh, and square again is hide UI. Helpful. I want to look at this in detail. It's just a random ass piece of metal. Uh, it's mm. not detailed enough to tell. Nope, these are these are clearly iron. Like that's a that's a stud right there. Well, <laughs> you know, we almost had game of the year, but shit like this <laughs> is why Elden Ring had to take it. Exactly. <laughs> so if these instead of being these like random iron like bits of nails and shit, um if these were little tiny pieces of gold with uh, figuration on them, okay, um, that would be a... real quick. We have a compliment, and also Good. someone asks: the gold changed out of Bremen mentioned in relation to Uppsala. Uh, he has way just way more. Okay, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, the gold chains are something different, and he just says that there's like a the entire thing is covered in gold from tip to toe. Gotcha. Uh, despite no. Okay. He also says that there are mountains, despite um also be a no. So we do have a compliment as well, and then yeah. I think we're through our list because we had cold take, hot take, and then design yep. diatribe about Odin, yes. and then getting into the design of this meat hall here. Yes. So let's do one compliment specifically about the meat hall, I guess, uh, and then we'll have another design talk mm. about Odin, because yes, yes. <laughs> what if the compliment is just Throod? <laughs> it's I just was a great say, character. That was, that was the previous Throod compliment. Slaps. I love her. We, she I could. Love her she deserves two. Yeah. yeah. She deserves two. Throod again. Still, just more Throod. One of the first things I got spoiled for this game was that Throod is in it because people love drawing, like, fan art of her and Atreus and, uh, uh, fuck, the girl from, uh, Yarnvither. Uh, Angerbola? Um, yeah, Angerbola, just hanging out and vibing. Hell yeah. Yeah. We love that film. Uh, the other compliment is actually this textile work, now that you can see the textile work. Yeah. I'll try to do some Is, I don't know enough about textile to say that this is period accurate, but it is good. It looks good. I appreciate that they have textiles. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that there are a lot of Thor pendants just kind of around. There was one uh, on the pillar in your room. There's one right above Wait, this little is? entryway. Um, yeah, there's just a little, little boop. Oh, a little yeah. Thor pendant here. If you go back into your room, I'll point it out. Um, it was just kind of like on the post. Um, on the left, right by your little thingy. It's in between the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like it's the candelabra... No, what's yeah. the name? I don't know. It's the little candle holder. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The the thing that holds the candelabra to the wall is just Mjolnir. Oh, wow. That's my room. Training dummy. Uh, late medieval Quintain. <laughs> like this is this is used in uh, some practice because you hit this and then it's gonna spin around and try and hit you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And so, be it, that's used in some types of training and target practice, and that's pretty neat. Uh, were candles really left like that back then? Um, it's unclear whether candles are used in the Viking Age. Hmm. Oil lamps, oil lamps were used back then. Uh, it's just little open lamps with a wick in them. But, uh, yeah. Candles? Not super duper clear to me whether or not they're being used. Do you see me nodding and saying, yes, I understand? I. I. God. Uh huh. Odin's such an asshole. Yeah. Yelling at his bird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, isn't that also a fire hazard? Yes. You see, this is you not letting me talk. No, Hugan, I, I don't need my ears clean. Oh, God, that was the... <laughs> this is only very, very tenuously related, but I recently, yeah. recently watched uh, one of the two Zorro movies, the Antonio Banderas ones, um, and those movies are so fun, except for some fucking reason, the De La Vega residence always has five million candles burning in it, yeah. and every time I see it, I'm like, this is a disaster waiting to happen. 100%. And... 
And in the first one, the building actually does like burn down in the intro. And I was like, well, whose fault was that? Do you have a name? <laughs> That's Easy. true. Yeah. Uh, really? Sure, why not? I've, you know, when I was like home much? for Christmas, my parents were watching the old Zoro TV show. Oh, Considering that, that's got, actually, that's, Thank it's you. super fun. I, mean, I won't really? even lie, it is so much fun. Which is the, I feel Mom's like fun. there's one bit. Who was and they the... say I'm the bad guy. Yes, we do, because you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. You're an asshole. We don't trust you. It's not working. But who, who the fuck was it? There was a bit I saw from, I think, one of the Zoro shows where, like, the bad guy du jour was, like, Jeremy Brett or something like that. Like, one of those really sort of, like, Everyone's cheekbony dudes wrong. who almost you exclusively war, played bad guys or, but yeah. was himself well, an expert fencer. Nah, uh, so there's a little bit you know where he's, mean? like, prepping what to, like, sword fight want, the uh, uh, De La Vega, and he, like, just, you. like, real yeah, quick, like, flourishes the sword and, like, whips a candle in half on the table. And then Zoro was like, ha-ha, and, like, does a single similar flourish. And, like, Foops it and it doesn't look like anything and then the candle like falls in half and I was like, okay One of those is a trick that the actor actually did yeah. <laughs> and The other one was a bit of stagecraft to make him look like the better swordsman. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Basil Rathbone I think it was Basil Rathbone. Yeah. Um, uh, I knew that he mostly played Sherlock Holmes, but also got typecast as bad guys before that um, I I love this interpretation that they've given Odin where he's like, yeah, okay when mortals have questions and need meaning, we give it to them. But like when we have existential problems, who the fuck solves it for us? Yeah. As uh -huh. an interpretation of Odin seeking knowledge, basically being in a slow rolling multi millennia long existential crisis of meaning. Yeah. And seems to have missed the obvious point of that it's the thing that you make for yourself. Um, no, 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 enlightened no, no. agnosticism in chat. Uh, oh, but no, no, no. Um, <laughs> it, it's a fascinating way to play up his quest for knowledge of like legitimately being, or at least what he is presenting is legitimately being um, very affected by the problem of what it means yeah. to be a god. Yeah. Which is interesting because, of course, that's a question that's prevalent in the rest of the game because that's what Kratos doesn't want to confront and that's what Atreus has been asking the whole time. Like, we're gods, what does that mean? So in the first game, he has his little, like, I'm going to abuse my power thing. And then Kratos is like, no, none of that. <laughs> uh, and since then, he's just been kind of like, I don't know, what's my purpose? What's the point of being a god? What does it mean? Uh, and Odin being like, oh, I've asked the same question. So... I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah, it's good. Uh, but chat did call it the Gnosis Hole, and I'm not happy <laughs> that that is now exclusively what I'm going to think about this as. <laughs> These aren't from the Nine Realms. Back up. What does that mean? Um, smolder Earth. And obsidian yep. Spark. Also, apparently, uh, Latin borrowings uh, exist because of Obsidian. Oh. Anyway. I suspect we're about we're not going to get time to wander What's around that? before we lose Odin again, it's so we will have to. We find out. We don't have to kill anyone. Uh huh. We don't have to are we able to enter it here? No, we are not. Uh, Tragic. They won't like you do photo mode cutscenes. Uh, like I would have completely ruined the pacing to do. Aww. Aww. It's probably because they have to do a lot of cheating during the cutscenes yeah. for things to enter and exit frame. Yeah. Yeah. I do help you. Maybe they'll give us time before they tell us that we Get need to go to. Here. Nope, we're just gonna go that. to that. Fine. Anyway, the core. This stuff is full of fear. Let's see where it takes you. The core argument I have about how they designed Odin is basically that they take the traditional 19th century image of Odin, thanks to Wagner, uh, yep. and they take a blend of those two, and then they take everything that they think makes, that like stereotypically makes him cool, and they do the like lame, underwhelming version of that. Uh, yeah, they just make him really shitty, basically. Yeah. So, uh, we're not going to be able to check that here but if we go i actually have a mouse over here that i should use uh i'm gonna hide this real quick uh you'll see i am on the uh, overclocked remix page instead of the page i intended yeah. to be. uh right if we just literally google search for odin you end up with firstly this very 19th century image of mm -hmm. uh, odin mm -hmm. as uh the warrior king so yep. with the 
Carl Emil Depp with a winged helmet. And the Roman Scudum with a random horn in it. God, I, I love how stupid that is. Uh, <laughs> and Gungnir. Or the other option, also from Wagner character art, the old man with the extremely long beard, you know, Gandalf. In disguise. Yeah, mm-hmm. very get... Mr. Wednesday looking. <laughs> it's Gandalf. Mm-hmm. Right, so if we look at uh, the God of War Ragnarok version... Be careful to not get spoilers in the images tab. Don't He's, worry. Oh, about it. actually, yeah, We're, maybe. This is this is fine. This is fine. Knowing that it's saying that he's the bad guy is not a spoiler. Okay. <laughs> I think that much was obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we take a look at him, right? It's the same attributes, right? You got the beard. You've got the balding, and you can see underneath the you've got the overcloak with the blue, and you've got snippets of things that look like armor. It's all mm-hmm. the same pieces. But instead of the long, majestic Gandalfy wizard beard, it's this, like, vague, vaguely maintained Shorecroft beard. Yeah, he it's, just looks like a used car salesman. Exactly. Instead of the long, the super long hair, he's balding. Uh, mm-hmm. Instead of the majestic wizard, wizard cap, he's got the much more period accurate, um, little floppy... Like almost fridging cap God, type I thing, love that which dumb is hat. <laughs> delightful. Uh, but you still get the blue instead of having the full plate and just walking around like it's nothing. He's got purely ornamental nonsense. Instead of having the big booming voice for the big operatic traditions of Wotan in um, uh, Gotdamerung, yeah, the, the last of the Ring Cycle, right? You get that big booming bass line in Wagner's operas for Odin. His voice, I mean, Richard Schiff freaking kills it oh, for yeah. that uh, slightly slimy, extremely <laughs> underwhelming, like, I'm just a guy. Oh, uh, yeah, like yeah. slimy and unassuming. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. funny thing, as soon as my dad watched one of these streams, he was like, I know exactly what actor this is. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, Such a I good don't choice. know who it is because I won't remember, but like, it's, I don't know. I guess this is that guy's whole vibe. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a great choice. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's, I think, the core design idea that animates everything they do with Odin, is the idea that he is just Wagner's Odin, but you invert it and make, make it like the shitty, unassuming version to just make Odin less and less and less grandiose. Which is cool, because they did kind of the opposite with Thor. Yeah. yeah. Like, they play they up like, Thor yeah. real hard. Uh, Thor's but... kind of been pretty boyified by the MCU. Like, yeah. it's not bad. It's just like, you know, he's he's supposed to be this titanic, larger-than-life, like, barrel-chested warrior uh, who also has a tremendous appetite and drinks very strongly and heavily and all that jazz. And it's like... You know, you can make him look like a, a magical pretty boy, uh, or you can make him a seven foot tall, ridiculously beefy dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, someone built like an actual bodybuilder with the sort of um, uh, like the weight belt that they wear to avoid hurting themselves when they lift heavy things. Yeah. You know? Um, and also give him a bit of a beer gut because it's like, you know, you can be a ludicrously strong guy and also have kind of a thick midsection. You know, not everybody looks like Chris Hemsworth. Slow going, eh? You could maybe help. Yeah, I think, and it works so well. And I mean, it reflects the character, right? Of this guy uh, also uh, has not taken the death of his kids super duper well. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, is going through a lot. Yeah, he's he looks it too. You know, this Thor has permanent eye bags and yeah. and kind of looks like he's been crying, but really realistically, he's just been drinking. Um, well, no, well, 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 apparently he uh, he's gone sober since huh. his son died. Because remember, Odin says, "I like yeah. you more when you when you drink." Oh, that's uh, true. And also, yeah. Amir um, uh, at one point will have a conversation that involves like, yeah. yeah kind of neat how Odin's not drinking. He and Sif used to get absolutely turned back in the day. Yeah, Thor and Sif. What did I say? You said Odin. Odin? Yeah, sorry, Thor. Um, All these one-syllable names, man, they get me. Uh, (laughs) 
Is this where I point out that Odin has two syllables? I was <laughs> 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 Yeah. But yeah, this version of Thor really feels like he's he is incredibly dangerous, uh, like both physically imposing and, of course, ludicrously powerful, and knows it. Like the way he acts is just like very, very casually knows he's the scariest person in any room he's in. Yeah. Um, but also is just absolutely going through the emotional and physical ringer because he stopped drinking, <laughs> and that's not easy. No. Uh. Also, this whole section, just like from a writing standpoint, um. I love that the way that they're sort of pairing up, you know, Thor with Atreus, and Atreus is like, haha, you're gonna act like my dad at all? You know, like, is something I'm comfortable with? Just be kind of gruff, and Thor's like, no, fuck you. Yep. <laughs> I don't care, I actually don't care about you. I don't just act like I don't care about you because I'm an emotionally constipated person. <laughs> I would legitimately leave you to die with no remorse. Um, yep. Uh, but yeah, right, all of that gets contrasted with Odin, like super, right. super duper strong, right? Yeah. Uh, where hey, he is you... the exact opposite, right? Take all the things that make Thor impressive and don't do that for Odin. Yeah. And yet, right, what it can do to you know from the way everyone else acts that Odin is it? scarier than Thor is. Too. Yeah. They were my yeah. Family. And so it's just like, oh, oh. They were your people too. The giants were And so, right, yeah. the, they, un, they do all the things that make him not traditionally, I but guess, just, scary just or majestic a, or awe inspiring. You know, uh, and it, and were here, we changing that just makes him trial. menacing. Could, yeah, because now you don't know what's dangerous about him. Yeah. It's a bit of a, like a, <laughs> like a Nappa and Vegeta thing where it's <laughs> like, Oh, that guy's really big and buff, and he's killed everybody. He's so scary. And uh, what the fuck is the deal with that little guy who seems to terrify the big guy? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Listen, Modi had some problems, but he was oh, my son. And the only reason you aren't mush right now is because of that broken piece of wood. Look, clearly neither of us can do this mission alone. And I want to impress the Allfather just as much as you do. Oh, yeah, by the way, Chad is asking, me, uh, why does Thor have an open wound in the, in the stomach? Uh, just Kratos buried his axe into Thor's gut. Trust. Yeah, Thor doesn't that, seem the self-care type. I'm not surprised he hasn't slapped a band-aid on there. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's what happened, uh, is that there... There, there was there was um, a fight between Kratos and Thor, and it went as well as you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. For everyone involved. Thor and kicks then. Kratos' ass and is like, "Cool, I've learned enough about you. Goodbye." And then just leaves. <laughs> Later, bitch. This is me trusting you. It's got. I will say. Um, fighting in this section alongside Thor is incredible. What? Oh, Thor. He just demolishes As he people. just smushes someone. Come on, smush wow. this guy for me. Smush this guy for me. Oh, God. Like. Jeez. Like, that oh, feels boy. good. Okay, so where's the mask saying to go? That feels real good. Mm-hmm. Isn't it predictable that the mask says go this way? Like, come on. There's only one direction <laughs> this level design goes. Thor, hey, you should get Jonas at me. The mask is, uh, pulling this way. We'll have to find some way down. Sure thing. I wasn't playing you, by the way. The trials are fun. Don't you ever have fun? You're Don't so you ever have fun? <laughs> you seem... hey, come look at me. Oh, this part's actually quite funny. <laughs> Uh huh. Come look at this. Oh. Thor, what the? <laughs> We're fine. Wait, Everything's fine. We're fine. You didn't die over there, did you? Everything is fine. No, but I was <laughs> thinking. Well, that's your problem. Oh, that's your problem. <laughs> 
Another one. <laughs> God. Bowser just passed that cliff. Might be something. God, I love that again. sword. First it's so fun. It's very fun. It's I love it for the same reason I love Alucard's sword in Castlevania. Yeah. Like swords that fly. <laughs> what do you mean Instant there it is? <laughs> <laughs> Strong as that. Look, I've had the. Hmm, I like this character's fashion sense to a degree that I would say was a crush, except it's just that I want to dress like them about many characters. You just happen to have one of those with Alucard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. He broods and he's got a cool coat. And he has a sword that flies. He's God, so he's so cool. And he's a wolf and he's awesome. <laughs> Or you can uh, help out against the troll, the multiple trolls. No. Why would he? Since we're short on time, I'll humor. Please. I mean, I can beat them. I just don't think this is going to be fun for uh, anyone to watch. Thor, please think of my viewers. <laughs> exactly. Don't upstage me on my own stream. <laughs> You also do have some, some turn into a wolf powers you can use. I do have turn into wolf powers, but don't feel super good against you. Know, here I find. Uh, probably because I like Atreus' base combat so much. Oh, yeah. That it's like, you know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, I was just trying to shoot Thor in the face there uh, instead of anyone relevant. Classic. Well, look, he's big and scary, and I think he's an enemy. It's fun. Fine. <laughs> Thor's like, yes. I'm fine, I'll do the trials. Yes, Stop <laughs> pestering me. I'm staying right here. Go on. Go. <laughs> Bye. Sweet. We're not staying right here. Uh, We're running. We're zooming. We're out. Hopefully. Zoom. We're booking it, baby. Hey. Well, the loot's really sweet. If you just sink another 300 hours into it, you'll get the 1% drop. I promise. Oh my god. I just need them to trust me. All right, he'll be there forever unless I bail him out. We got plenty of time now. Yeah. Exactly. Loads of time. No. Oh, there's enemies. I thought I should do something about them, huh? Like, theoretically, you could choose the diplomatic option, but the game doesn't really have the game doesn't a seem robust to be a big fan <laughs> of diplomacy. Any, any, anyone want to explode the thing? Anyone want to explode the? Anyone want to explode the thing? Thank you. And that kills all of them because reasons. Woo! Woohoo! Uh. All right. Let's go take a look at what the sneaky, sneaky bonus information in this panel from the previous game is. Cutscene time. <gasps> Cutscene time. Cutscene time. Something about forging a sword. Loki. <laughs> Trained as a warrior, you are tragically, tragically easy to startle. I, I, I didn't. Also me. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> a girl can't visit a shrine of her own volition? You're here for Sorter's Marvel. Maybe. <laughs> You're out looking for more giant marbles? You know what this looks like, right? Like the life story of one of our people? And also maybe a storage closet. No. This looks an awful lot like Defying Destiny. The question is, what are you doing here? Rewriting my story. <laughs> By helping the bad guy. By helping the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Well, I've made only good decisions so far in this I'm game. Working with them. Uh huh. I would never tell him anything about Ironwood if that's what you're worried about. Yep, please. We know Thor is Definitely in the vicinity. Let's serving. loudly speak about Ironwood some more. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. It's like, I love their dynamic. They're so cute. But also, come on, kids. 
Stop being. You're welcome to help if you want. <laughs> Could you be stop, less just stop fifteen being stop for being five minutes? <laughs> there are any prophecies of you collecting any marbles? Our endings haven't been written, right? Come on, Chair. <laughs> Now, I don't know how Hello much they're going to try and force a, a force heteronormative love triangle Another over model. here, but I hope it's not Service. much because the, the dynamics between all these kids is too cute to mess up with. Oh no, is there going to be a relationship? I strongly doubt through this into Atreus. <laughs> the, this is a fact. Uh, it's not impossible, I just find it unlikely. Oh, oh, no, I agree with you that she's not. Uh, well, oh, that, but there is some stuff that implies that he is. He's got like a little puppy crush. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me, but come on. These is two that are what perfect. that's called? <laughs> no. You think I know what straight people are like? <laughs> you know, puppy love is a thing. Don't think I've heard of her before. And here comes Surtur. So, oh, God. This, this is a. Some fight. Yeah, Hang on. It... Oh, this oh, was very is... funny. <laughs> No, no, no. Bad. Yeah. It's because they fought together. Questionable animation. This is a deep cut. Sinmara is mentioned in Fjelvin's mouth. Uh. Uh. Fucking. I mean, uh -huh. if we want to talk about forced heteronormativity. <laughs> oh, so they played out a whole fun enemies to lovers thing in a potentially much more interesting and well paced game. And uh, now we get to watch the, I don't know, the, the clip art version. Oh, and now it's Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Ragnarok destroys yeah, so they boned and then they right. turned into a giant stabby giant thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, sure. That was... Yeah, uh, she she's mentioned by name oh, well, in one heroic so poem in which she's part of a reference to answer one of the mythical cosmological questions that the Faster doorkeeper is using. Bigger. That yeah. is the only mention of Sigmar in the entire huh. fucking corpus. <laughs> well, that's great because that means that they got a. Uh, a name a with no lore attached so that they could do whatever they wanted with it and be then careful. be like, look, it's legit. Yep. Is this story Surter's self-insert slash fic? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this lady, she goes to a different realm, shut up, uh, and we yeah. boned. It was great. Yeah. Uh, we boned so good that like we combined into a giant magical monster because that's what happens when you bone and then and, our, yeah. our good boning meant that uh, asgard was destroyed and everyone clapped <laughs> yeah we boned so good it literally shattered a world <laughs> we're so good at this uh yeah the, the one legend does say that she's Surya's wife but also i i stand this head this fiction of course i admit that was fun oh Hold on. Let me shoot these guys, and then you'll shoot these guys again, and then the lava uh, ran red with their blood. Shoot these guys. Oh. Great. You want to help down here? I'll or definitely not get hit by random you beat all those monsters. trials. Or did you just random watch your fall? Hooray! What says the Moon Knight yes. meme? That's random random yeah. bullshit. Go. <laughs> Uh, for like the two weeks that everybody was talking about Moon Knight, I loved all the memes. And then a few people being like, some of these are real guys. Yeah, right, actual I know you're here, Dracula, you big fucking nerd. Where's my goddamn money? I don't think that one's real, but I man, know, that was so fucking funny. Yeah. Random bullshit away. Was the random bullshit go also fake? Unfortunately, that one was fake. Yeah. Considering the lead up was the goons being like, oh, that's Moon Knight. Watch out. He's always got some random bullshit. You wouldn't believe the scores of these things I just killed. It was what a good course. show. It should have ended at episode five. I'm, I'm amazed at how little impact, I think you're right. you know, every single one of these shows has had for more than, like, than three weeks. Least. Yep. If I watch Hawkeye, what episode, what episode should I stop at? Uh, second to last, I think. Although okay. I need to check a list. It's like, here's the thing. Hawkeye is a completely fine, fun show. It's, it's good. But if you've watched Daredevil and are expecting that standard of Kingpin, you are going to be disappointed by his uh. appearance in the finale. Spoiler alert. Um, it was, uh, there's a lot to like about that show. I was talking to my dad about it um, because he hasn't watched the Daredevil shows. Uh, so he, he just thought like, wow, you know, that actor does a really good job portraying the physicality of this very dangerous guy. And I was like, you think that's good? You should see him in a show that's allowed to show blood. 
Um, <laughs> uh, I will say the one very fun thing about that show is that uh, the finale time. takes place in and around like Rockefeller well Center enough. in New York City, uh, and there is a major part where the giant Christmas tree tips over, and my dad was like, everybody who's from New York has check. fantasized about that happening at least once, so that was very <laughs> cathartic for me. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like yeah. we need to head through that gate. Thor? Ain't that impressive. Real. That's real oh, god yeah, well, stuff. <laughs> yeah. So am I. Real god stuff. God gamer shit. Real <laughs> exactly. god hours. It's here. This is the spot. Well, where is it? And the lava? I don't know. Uh. Mash. Mash harder. <laughs> he did the mash. Some advice. Sticking your lava is hot? <laughs> Spoiler alert chat, lava is I wasn't hot. Thinking. Good. It's, God, it's better that way. Uh this right, Thor is so much fun. He's so Loki. much fun. Loki, don't try to play me again. You're an okay kid. Aww. But you're still a giant and I'll revel in killing you too. Uh, it's a shame that he's also a murderer. What did you uh, enjoys Loki. murder way too much. The rift got mm. brighter. Look, we did it. Look, oh no, but he Loki's knows this hole is now slightly now. larger. We can read it all. But you can't translate. Not yet. See, I got a little theory. I think if we can find uh -huh. the rest of this, we can use uh -huh. it to look into that without, sure. you know, losing an eye or worse. Look at this. We make a good team. Don't we? Don't we make a good damn team? I have a theory about that camera placement, but I'm gonna I'm gonna not. <laughs> both behave out there. Right, we talked about that, right? Was really oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot from him. You learned something from. Was him. I on base? Uh, <laughs> I don't. What did you think so? Okay, but well, <laughs> yeah. Then I won't say it and embarrass <laughs> myself. Teach him. Aww. Boo. Boo this um, I slime was wondering ball. where that went. Actually, I had a pretty good idea. Odin is a very Change interestingly shitty person, and the way that it shines really through sure specifically the good. people he's fucked up is but is very solid writing. Yeah. In that he, I, I don't I mean this in the form of like me. a diagnosis, but he feels like a narcissist. End. Mm -hmm. In that he's you. the most important person in his you life at all him. times, but he also picks Take favorites, but he cycles out. through favorites because standing. they don't actually yes. matter to him. Um, so right now, the full force of that is on Atreus, yeah, you know, new golden boy, uh, person he wants something from and is thus there. buttering up. Um, and then you look at his dynamic with Thor, which is so weirdly fraught and like broken. But only Thor seems upset you know, by that because only war? Thor is emotionally invested in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah right. because Odin started. sees Thor as a blunt no. instrument. Exactly, a uh, hammer, like perhaps. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, but of course, honest, to Thor, it's like it's that's you know my curious. dad. Go so <laughs> it's it's yeah. dicey. Uh, uh huh. It, essentially, it's one of those things where like. I, I would characterize this as like people have relationships with Odin, but they're completely one way. It's only about what Odin can get from them. Uh, but this they is... feel like it should, you know, it you sh zoom? there should Triggers. be more care. You know, Freya, somebody Triggers who's married down. to Odin. Uh, this <laughs> anyway. is Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm trying to take a look at this because this might be fun. Uh, are those Elder Fools Ark or are those medieval runes? They're also upside down, so it's hard to tell. But it might actually be younger Fools Ark. Uh, there are runes that are designed to be written on ink uh, in both Old English and Old Norse. Hmm. There's whole poems composed and the whole manuscripts composed in medieval runes, and they are way cooler than Elder or Younger Fools Ark, and more things should be showing them. <laughs> I don't think these are those. Shame. It's unfortunately also. Who the, what the fuck have you been doing to this manuscript that it's this faded? Yeah. Like, 
What the fuck, dude? You've um, just been shining a high power flashlight yeah. at it every night. Also, <laughs> angry noises. <laughs> Vegas here just because uh, I also think read to your point that seeing Odin's personality through the people he interacts with also spills out into how he affects the other realms oh. and it's a great mm. way to be Not like Odin seems you know charming and and you know persuasive and whatever but if you actually look at the people around him you realize how horrible he is and a lot of narcissists are like that where they themselves are like you talk to them in a vacuum and it's like oh they're charming they're funny they're they're you know it's like perfectly reasonable but then you you see the people in their lives and it's like oh 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 you did this to them oh, okay cool got it got it <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it's one of those things where it's like if you're just you know one-on-one in a room with them it's like this person is right, you know on saying on all the right it. things and i'm having a good time talking with them uh but then it's like you you have to judge them by their actions not their vibes um yeah which is one of my favorite villain tropes too because like i always feel a little bit iffy when like all the good guys are like beautiful fun you know even toned reasonable people and all the bad guys are like snarling dark clothed you know gross looking monsters that are always like yes my liege you know like like if all the good guys are hot then the bad guys should also be hot you know (laughs) equal opportunity yeah but it's like more importantly that means that you're not priming your audience to judge somebody's moral character by how hot they are like it's to as a purveyor of fictional hot people i love making all my characters hot it's just you got to do that to the bad guys too because if it's just the good guys then everyone's going to be like ah yes beauty equals goodness i understand it's like no i need you to judge these people by the content of their character yep shout outs um well free hot take for a chat um yeah this is the one thing where the lord of the rings movies in my opinion, drastically fuck up. Yeah. Because Viggo Mortensen, for how <laughs> just objectively Aragorn the rest of his existence is, yeah. is way too hot. <laughs> well, that's the thing. In the book, it's like, I, I thought, you know, a servant of the enemy would, like, look fouler and or, or, or like, look fairer and feel fouler. And it's like, fairer than this? How was it? And they're like, oh, Aragorn's so gross. He's all muddy because he sleeps under a bush every night. And then meanwhile, Viggo Mortensen is like, hello, I have three days of stubble and uh, some artful dishevelment. (laughs) And that's all you're getting. Exactly. The weird thing is I've seen him in other roles and I don't find him as attractive when he's not Aragorn. (laughs) (laughs) This is also true. Yeah. No offense to the man. It's just, I don't know. There's something about the bone structure that really works when, when he's just got long, dark hair. Yeah. Here's an and interesting eyebrows. point by uh, uh, Maggie Strissa. Honestly, the thing is that a lot of narcissists are not charming to everyone in their lives. They're charming to people who it matters for them to charm. They can get mm-hmm. what they want by being cruel or distant to people day. who they can do that to. And it's only right. the people who they can't berate that they turn on the charm for. Yep. Very, yeah. very correct. Because that's the thing. It's like that mm. attitude, so it so often relies on work. other people valuing them and and caring about them and their opinions of them which is why you know so many people who with like narcissistic family members will be like oh i just have to go no contact with this person like because i I need to cut myself loose from this because they you know the care has only ever flowed one way i gotta stop being invested in what this person thinks of me um because it's just such a mess uh and of course in that case it's like if if this is a person who has like control over somebody's life or uh essentially feels completely secure and like this is a person that i can you know do whatever i want to berate manipulate whatever then there's no need to like this person said like be charming or nice or whatever because you know their control on that person is just considered a fact in in that person's head so anyway it's interesting yeah um And I think the way that they're characterizing Odin, the way that they've built him up over the last couple games is just like, he's, he's horrible, he's manipulative, but we don't see him until now. Like, we are not thinking, well, maybe these people got it wrong, you know? We've had plenty of time to get to know Freya, to trust her opinion and, and see how much this fucked her up, uh, specifically. And of course, all the other characters as well. So when, when we're seeing Odin, we're like, oh, this is really bad because he actually does seem charming and if i didn't have that context i'd probably be falling for this yeah uh sorry the the eyes covered bit there chat by the way it was um oh no atreus don't take a knife to a 
artifact of unknown age. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Disintegrates in his hands. Ah, hey, they're just know. banging against the table so people get the runes we, to glow we, again. We, we care about runes, right? No. We, we're caring about the writing carved into something. <laughs> Don't make new markings on the thing. Atreus is like, wow, the one copy of, the, of this saga on this mask? Whoopsies, I broke it. I was exactly. like, no! Shit! I don't see how that would help. are the fates of these lads, are they not? And now we are back with, uh, you know, the dad of the dad of boy. Kratos has mm. done worse to the fates for less. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, it's this bit? God. Yeah, it's this Fuck. bit. All right. But uh, I think this bit is going to have to be a uh, next time thing. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. We're coming up on the three hour mark. Exactly. Yeah. We are coming up on the three hour mark. That's about as long as we run these things for. You are not so. free of blame here. You encourage these losers. Oh, boy. It's confusion. Oh, no. Chat's talking about, like, has there ever been, like, an actually heroic character who's unattractive and somebody was like, uh, I want to say Shrek, but he's hot as fuck, too. <laughs> well, the, the, to be fair, the one moment where he's, like, when he shape changes into a human, they do make him, um, conventionally turn all those dials to 11. I'm gonna respectfully disagree with that assessment. <laughs> human Shrek does not, uh, strike me as... You know what? It's fine. We don't need to get into this. If those dolls were more moderation, I think it would be, but yes. Uh, yeah, I am with you, but I also see where they're coming from. Anyway. There's more people in this house than Sindri and Brock were ever prepared for. True. Yeah, yeah. Your instincts haven't let us down so far. As we are stuck in cutscene, man. Let's find the norms. It's you. interesting that um, that Mir is like, I'm surprised by this course of action you're taking, Kratos. Yeah. But also, it's fine. I'm sure everything will be fine. Yeah. Nothing bad will happen. But we will find the Norns uh, next week. Next time! Next time. On Journey to the Norns. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you set yourself up for that one, right? This one's fucking. I, oh boy, all of my pacing complaints. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for having us on the stream today. This has yeah. been this has been super fun. Thank you both for Always agreeing to join us. And as yeah. I said, we will be back uh, next week, and we will have our first of our guests for this half of the series. Uh, it's going to be Basil Price, a PhD candidate at the University of York, who has done work on Beowulf, done work on weird late uh, saga and poetic material. Uh, queer and ge queer theory, gender theory, a whole bunch of really exciting stuff. So I, I am. He's also one of my best friends. So I am unbelievably excited to have him on. Uh, it is going to be a phenomenal time, uh, and I hope you will all join us for that. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, though, uh, if you enjoyed this, do hit that subscribe button because it does help a lot to keep making sure this these types of streams are able to happen. Uh, I also stream a variety of other stuff, so if you want to be notified for that, do hit that follow button. It's usually about three times a week. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Pentiment. We're still going to be playing a lot of Pentiment. <laughs> More! Uh, but I've been also playing Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, and Hollow Knight some recently. Ooh. So, good games. So, if you want more fun history ramblings, hit those follow buttons uh, and consider joining us. Otherwise, yeah, uh, yeah I think that is it from us unless if either of you have closing thoughts nothing from me no nope, right. i think we're good all right all right then uh until next time i see you all have a good rest of your night uh and farewell yeah